All right, ladies and gentlemen, as ever, my name is Shane. That's Shane is Games, and tonight we're going to be playing Jenny LeClue Detective Who for the PC. Uh, if you're just joining us, you haven't missed a thing, because we've never played this one before. Uh, but if you'd like to check out some of the games I've played in the past, be them obscure, unusual, or nostalgic, feel free to check out my YouTube channel. But for today, let's go ahead and get into the game first. A little bit of background on this one. Um, if this looks like your kind of game and you look it up yourself, you may notice that some editions of the game are titled as the Spoken Secrets Edition. And what that basically means is when this game was first released, it had no voice acting in it. And then I guess possibly because it sold well, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but eventually they re-released it uh, with full voice acting, which is super awesome because uh, from what I've seen, the voice acting is a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, just in case you come across that, that's what that means right there. Hey, Lost, welcome in. Hope you are doing well. Glad to have you with us. I like this, too, how uh, her, her her setup, ch her, her look right there changes depending on what we've got select. So continue, she looks like that. New game, she's thinking. Options, she's got her journal out. And if I go to quit, she's dead. <laughs> So that's really cute. I like that. What is Unix? Welcome in. It's crazy how expensive voice acting is. I mean, it does make a lot of sense. Uh, because, you know, it, it takes a while to get just the right uh, just the right performance on voice acting. So, you know, one hour of in-game audio does not equate to one hour of studio time. And there's only so much you can do in one day to make sure you're not destroying anybody's vocal cords short-term or long-term. On top of that, there's a lot of studios that are demanding motion capture of voice actors as well. So it's just a, whew, just a nightmare right there. Let's go back to the 90s and early 2000s get the programmers in HR to get the voice lines. Do you really want to go back to those dark times? Do you really? <laughs> I really don't want to. Oh my god, Sean, that emote, that's amazing. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and start a new game right here. Let's see. Start a brand new game, erasing all your collectibles and progress. Yeah! Let's do this. Creepy. We're gonna say the sounds look creepy. <laughs> it's definitely nothing out of the ordinary. I don't know where you live, but not where I am. It's a little bit smoky. Taking a boat out in the lake. Oh, it was, wasn't it? Shit, I was trying to place it there, Gibby. I think you got it. Okay, we got a puzzle here, it looks like. <clears throat> Let me cut up on chat a little bit. And yeah, Unix, that's actually what drew, uh, uh, got my attention for this game in the first place was the art style. I love it. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> uh, oh, I see now. I see that little straight line on there. Ooh, hang on. Oh, jeez, alright. 
So some of the gears turn some of the other gears. All right, so I gotta work. All right, so let me get this one first. Then we get the outer one next. Then we get the inside one last. There we go. The button. What does it do? Out right in the middle of a lake. Bad etiquette. What is he doing there? What? Who? Oh, I must have dozed off. Perhaps we need a spot of tea to wake us up. What do you say, Rufus? Yes, yes, quite right. Better get back to work. This book won't write itself. Maybe I should start somewhere easier. I'll come back to the prologue later. The sun rose over another perfect day in picturesque Arthurton. Falling asleep on a typewriter would hurt so bad. <laughs> to the casual observer, Arthurton seemed like any other small, quiet town. It was nestled in a valley between two mountains, lined by lustrous forests, and perched on the edge of a pristine lake. It had a main street with all the essentials, including a place to sip coffee. It had schools, a college, a church, and a police station. It even had a museum no one ever visited. It was the kind of place you might find anywhere on your travels. Typical, maybe even forgettable. But there was one thing in Arthurton that was unlike any other town in the whole world. Actually, it was a girl. Her name was... Jenny LeClue, and she was the world's greatest detective. Finkelstein residence. Oh, hello, Glenda. Yes, he said he might ring. Okay, patch me through then. Richard? Yes, I got it. I did, and my answer is no. I understand that, but... Well, yes, of course, but... No, no, no. Nothing is settled. I'm not going to do it. It goes against everything my books stand for. No, not yet, but... If I could just... Please, listen to what I'm saying. Having some trouble with an editor, it sounds like there. Let me cut up on Shed a little bit. Did anybody else notice there was a bakery there named Agatha Krusty's? Which I'm so angry about. <laughs> Oh, lost! You don't noticed it. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Fifty cents for a haircut? That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Chinenin, welcome in. How are you doing today, Chinenin? Hope everything is going in with you. 
It's Frankenstein. <laughs> Clearly he's trying to sell the book rights to a video game company. I suspect this does take place in the past because so far we've got a typewriter and a rotary phone. All right, what have we got here? Can I, ooh, wait, hang on. Am I, am I using a controller for this? Because I can't control this with the mouse, it doesn't appear like. Is there not like a mouse? And is there, is there not like a mouse option for this? Controls. Yeah, no, this is apparently a controller game. Point and click for controller. All right, that's, that's weird, but that's what we're doing. We can do that. Let's see what we got over here. Uh, we got a letter back here. Letter to Finkel fans draft. Well, it's me again, Arthur K. Finkelstein, and here we are at book 38 of the Jenny LeClue series. Her most joyful adventure yet. Thank you to all the new Jenny LeClue fans out there. You have been both incredibly supportive. To answer your questions, one, despite any rumors you may have heard, of course the Jenny books will continue, as long as there is ink in my pen and ribbon on my typewriter. Uh, two, yes, it will be more of the same. I refuse to change my formula. Arthurton will always be a safe and happy place. I assume those are Kickstarter backers. Gotcha, gotcha. Also, hang on while I'm thinking about it. Let me go ahead and set a category here. There we go. Let's see. It might just be one of those games that if they detect a controller, they forget any other controls exist. That's true, too, but I don't mind. We can use a controller. That's fine. Hey, Cider. I'm doing good. How about yourself, Cider? How are you doing today? Rotary phone just made me remember that people complain about not understanding that type of phone. Trivia murder party. Oh, my God. My mom, when I was young, actually kept a rotary phone plugged in in the house just to confuse uh, my friends when they came over. Because, you know, you're like, you know, like 10, your friends come over. They're like, hey, I got to call my mom to let him know I'm staying for lunch. And then she'd be like, oh, yeah, your phone's over there. And then they'd see the rotary and they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> because she's a troll like that, it turns out. <laughs> All right, so we got that over there. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Woo! I don't know what the point of that was, but I'm happy. Somehow that tiny little bit of chaos has enriched my life. <laughs> Are you that kind of sort of person too? Yes. Would you give a blackberry to a person? Yes. <laughs> chaos. Hey, BlackRock, welcome in. How are you doing today? It is kind of a cat instinct, isn't it? It kind of is. I acknowledge this. I can turn the light on and off. Cute. Whoa. What's that? You found gallery art. All right, so there's collectibles in the game. It would appear. That's really violent. Uh, what else we got? We got a letter right here. Wonder if they make modern rotary phones that work with VoIP? They do. I have seen them. Uh, and I know uh, Hack a Day used to have some plans to build your own as well, which is amazing. From the off off office of Richard Inkwell. Uh, let's see. Dear Arthur, hope all is well. Afraid I've got some bad news, old chum. Oops, here we can zoom in. There's no e easy way to say it, so I've attached the latest book sales numbers. Whew. All right. They've kind of fallen off a cliff there. Nowadays, young readers want more mystery and danger. You're losing them with Jenny's increasingly timid and repetitive adventures. One bit of good news, it's too late for the stores to cancel their orders for the next book. So we're going to give you one last go and see if you can breathe some life into the old girl. We want you to try a proper murder mystery. Start killing people off. Add some drama. The bottom line is, if you don't step it up, I'm afraid of uh, it's a case of Jenny and the last hurrah. In other positive news, someone from a real newspaper finally reviewed your last book. Oh, good. A review. Let's check that out. <laughs> Did I miss our steed? Oh, my God. Ian Holmes and HTTP colon slash slash. I will always, John, have a place in my heart for HTTP colon slash slash. Like I was a champion. To be fair, after book 35, they did go downhill. That's a lot of books. Let's check out the review here. 
Jenny LeClue and the Missing Marmalade Sandwich, the 38th and hopefully last book in a series which is very much past its prime. <laughs> I like how he wrote, I took the worst bits out. Once a collection of mystery stories cherished by children all over the world, Jenny LeClue has since taken a nosedive into mediocrity without reservation. Uh, let's see. The only mystery left in Arthurton is how this trash keeps getting published. This reader nearly died of boredom. On a positive note, the book makes a great doorstop. <laughs> well. Was Nature's Avenger nothing to you people? That was another one. Mother Nature's Avenger. That was another great name. <laughs> let's see. I imagine all of this might come as a bit of a shock, but we've got to move with the times. Throw in a murder or two, a dash of real tragedy, and who knows? Maybe you've got one great story left in you. I'll bring you later to discuss. Sorry about your career. Chin up, though, eh? Richard Inkwell. P.S. Squash next week? At least you've got time to work on that backhand. Oh, God. So that's what that phone call was all about, it would appear. Is uh, His cozy mysteries are a little too cozy. And they want him to add some actual uh, danger in there, which is interesting. Hey, Cirrus! I am doing good. How about yourself? How are you doing today? Uh, Alright. Ooh, there's another sticker right there. More gallery art. Take that. Uh, let's see. Alright, so what do we got over here? Alright, that's what we were just reading, chapter one. Oh, that's what he was just uh, reading out to us. All right, that's where he left off in the story. As an author, my backhand is terrible. You gotta work on that. It's important. It's important. Doing okay? Can't complain? Good to hear. Good to hear. Let me crank it up and down. Uh, all right, what are we doing here? What are we supposed to be doing here? Um, let's see, we already saw that. There's something else left to do that I'm missing? We already looked at that. Um, I feel like we interacted with everything here now. Not seeing anything else. Oh, there's just an exit button. There we go. You don't understand what you're asking for. You want me to turn Jenny's world upside down? Kill off my characters and destroy everything I've built over the last 30 years? Fine. I'll give you what you want. But I warn you, I'm a stream of consciousness writer. And you have unleashed my fury. Good day, sir. Boring? Predictable? Bah! Well, if it's murder they want, it's murder they'll get. Oh, jeez. That sounds drastic. It should have been another perfect day in Arthurton. But today was different. And nothing would ever be the same again. To begin with, Jenny LeClue was dead. Alright, that's drastic, yeah. <laughs> her skin was pale, her eyes glassy and frozen. What cruel fate had befallen our beloved detective? No, no, no! Never move the victim! Mrs. LeClue, she's doing it again. Jenny LeClue, you are a dead body. Dead bodies don't talk. Julie LeClue, former detective, teaches dumb students. Terrible cook, great mom. But he's doing it wrong. As wonderful as it would be if all cadavers were so talkative, we must deduce the cause of death without their help. With only the evidence laid before us, we build a picture from the fragments left behind. We collect clues, interpret the data, and solve our puzzle one piece at a time. 
until it feels as if the victim is speaking to us. But Jenny is right, Jonathan. You mustn't disturb the crime scene. Vital evidence could be lost. Sorry, Mrs. LeClue. Okay, you've all had a chance to study the body? Who can postulate how she met her demise? Ooh, uh, me, me! I think it was an accident? Yeah, she obviously wasn't looking where she was going. So she slipped on the wet floor. And cracked her head open. Like an egg. And then she bled to death. Really, how can you tell? Well, there's a giant pool of blood around her head. Yeah, I know. I was being sarcastic. Oh. Actually, you're both wrong. What? It was cold-blooded murder. Yes. Murder? Don't be ridiculous. Where's the murder weapon? There's no evidence anyone else was even here. Oh, yes, there is. It was murder. And I can prove it. The case of the dead lab assistant. Jenny had read all the books. She'd absorbed all her mother's teachings. But there was nothing quite like getting your hands dirty. How many people get the chance to solve their own murder? The first step in any good deduction was collecting evidence. Seemingly insignificant details could provide a vital piece of the puzzle. First, I'll search the crime scene for clues. Then she'd analyze the data. And finally... Deduce the real cause of death. All right, we got our first mystery right here. I like it. Let me get caught up on ch uh, chat real quick. <laughs> Consequences will never be the same. <laughs> how can she be a terrible cook and a great mom? As long as somebody in the house knows how to cook, I think I can get away with it. <laughs> and somebody mentioned 30 years without a development. I was, as soon as I hear that, I immediately think of the Hardy Boys books. I read those when I was a kid. And... Like, don't ever read the Hardy Boys books. They're fucking terrible. <laughs> Basically, every single one of them is these two meatheads uh, find out about a murder and then uh, get beat up and get taken to the old lighthouse and then they, they hit somebody in the solar plexus and then solve the crime. Nobody gets older. Nothing happens in their lives. Um, nobody notices the fact that they just keep solving all these murders all over town. Nothing happens. Every one of them is the same thing. So that's, I, I think this is probably based on like the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew and those types of books. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Pretty sure you're solving your own murder as the plot of an episode of Sliders. Oh my god, I miss Sliders. That show is so great. And hey, DB Stewart, welcome in. Yep, we are solving our own murder, but only for educational purposes. So let's see what we can find. I see a sticker right there. Go ahead and grab that for us. The best way to interact with the Hardy- Oh god, the 70s TV show, oh no. The funny thing is they tried to do a Hardy Boys revival in the 90s. And uh, instead of nothing happening, everything happened. They just keep murdering people all the time. <laughs> and they'd, they'd murder major characters and like the Hardy Boys would be out for blood and vengeance. It was ridiculous. Got another sticker right there. Any more stickers that I can see? All right, let's start gathering clues here. Let's see what we get. What a waste of perfectly good coffee. Jenny's love for coffee was almost as strong as her passion for crime solving. Chalky green residue on the rim. <laughs> Smells like burnt matches. I just want to point out that the mug says the ends justify the beans. Which is the most epic slogan I've ever heard for a coffee shop. And I want to shop there all the time. <laughs> the ends justify the beans. I like their mascot too, the little Mr. Beans guy. Alright, so there's this chalky green residue that smells like burnt matches. Interesting. Yeah, Nazaran, it's good. It's good, I like it. How are you doing today, Nazaran? Hope you're doing well. The floor is wet and slippery, but also immaculately clean. Interesting. Approximately eight sizes too big. And covered in mud. Hmm. Boots way too big and muddy. That's interesting. There's no doubt the victim lost a lot of blood. Right, right. 
The victim has a green smudge on her lips. It's not lipstick. Aren't right, similar, perhaps, to the smudge around the uh, uh, rim of the cup? Doing well, good to hear, good to hear. Without her trusty bifocals, Jenny couldn't see the nose in front of her face. They were her window to the world and the lens through which she focused her keen detective vision. Right. It wasn't Jenny's style to wear accessories, but this hair clip was the exception. Its function as a lockpick had saved Jenny from a long night trapped in her school locker. She'd worn it ever since. Handy, handy. Uh, what else have we got here? Jenny's blue sweater was scruffy and quite uncomfortable, but her grandmother had knitted it, and so it was her favorite. Aww. The more it itched, the closer she felt to her. That's weird. But I've all right. seen enough. Time to wrap this case up. Jenny was a meticulous record keeper, noting every relevant clue in her trusty journal. A great detective knew that solving a mystery was simply a matter of connecting the dots. I'm certain this wasn't a mere accident. Now I just need to prove it. How do uh, I know the victim didn't slip? All right, I see where we're going here. <laughs> Doug Funny Feet! Oh my god, there's another thing I haven't thought about in a while. <laughs> hey Kiss, welcome in, how are you doing today? Killed by an aggressive and incompetent door-to-door -door salesman. That'd be a nice uh, plot there. Uh, let's see, so how do we know that the victim didn't slip? Um, ah, here's one thing. I think I got this. The victim's boots are filthy. They should have left big muddy footprints on the floor. So where are they? Brilliant, brilliant. That's actually pretty, really clever. Either someone washed away her footprints, or she was carried here. I like this game already. Okay, that proves she didn't slip. So how did she actually die? What was the real cause of death? Medieval hair shirt. Oh god, that's something I haven't thought about in a while. I suspect the real cause of death has to do with... There's a green residue in the bottom of the victim's coffee cup. It smells of burnt matches. Phosphorus! Also found in... Common Garden Fertilizer. Alright, alright. The same green mark is on the victim's lips. Her coffee was spiked with fertilizer. Someone clearly wanted her dead! Alright, interesting, interesting. Ah, the case of the dead lab assistant. Gone before her time. Was it poison? Yes. A blow to the head? Yes. An accident? Certainly not. No footprints in an unshattered mug? She was killed somewhere else and carried here. This is the story of a scorned ex-lover. Jenny? The gardener, enacting his revenge. Jenny? A deadly brew of fertilizer and caffeine coursing through the veins. That's quite enough, thank you. What happens to the gardener? Is this gonna be on the test? Remember, class, even the smartest criminals make mistakes. This is how we catch a killer. But what's the point of all this? Yeah, there hasn't been a murder in Arthurton in years. Every town has a dark side, even Arthurton. By doubting, we are led to question. And by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Okay, that's all for today. Don't forget, next class is our field trip to the morgue. So have a light lunch. The students need to think for themselves, Jenny. That's why they're here at Gumbolt. To learn. I just figured we all had places to go. Speaking of which... And where are you off to, young lady? I'm a dead body mom, remember? Dead bodies don't tell. See ya! The sass. Wait, before you go, I have something for you. Cool! What is it? If I told you, that would spoil the fun, wouldn't it? 
The Leclus didn't simply hand each other presents. They hid them. It was a family tradition, and Jenny had developed a sixth sense for finding them. With her trusty magnifying glass at her side, nothing eluded her. All right, gotta, gotta find what she hid there. High-level cleric casts slight living energies. I hope not. Seems like a different type of game. Yeah, I hope I'm enjoying the voice acting a lot. I can't imagine this game without it. It seems like really fitting for the uh, the type of game. Ooh, all right. Magic seeing magnifying glass. Oh, here we go. That's dramatic. A new journal. To Jenny, there was nothing better than the aroma of a fresh leather notebook. It is nice. It smelled like mystery. Without missing a beat, she did what any detective worth their salt would do. She decorated it. Let's see, they definitely wanted to establish uh, she's her mother's daughter real quick. I mean, I think for me, that's a thing you need to do in these teenage detective novels. Is it's like why does why does this child know so much about solving mysteries? Well, in this case, her mom is a, f a former detective, and she teaches uh, crime solving, so that makes sense. I heart nerds. I love that we're putting that right in the center. Uh, let's see. Oh, we can, just, we can just put stickers on there. We don't exactly have much to put on there. Put a heart right there. There we go. <laughs> Well, this is an adorable mechanic. Recluse that right there. Uh, put a nice little starburst up here. There we go. I'm feeling that. Well, maybe we'll get some more stickers later on. Oh, you can rotate them as well, can you? Oh, we can rotate, we can scale. Oh, we can scale! That's amazing! Alright, hang on, hang on. If that's the case. We gotta make I, I Heart Nerds uh, real big. There we go. Pick that up right there. Scale that up a bit. There we go! Now we're talking. Drop that right there. The crystalline entity! Oh my god! I When I was a kid, I thought that was the coolest thing on TV. I'm like, this is the best special effect I've ever seen. It doesn't hold up well. This will be the rest of the stream. Luckily, we don't have a ton of stickers, otherwise this would be. <laughs> and let's move this down here. Let's scale it up. We don't have a lot of stickers to put on here, so we may as well make them nice and big. There we go. That'll be good for right now. A new journal meant new adventures. She imagined all the thrilling cases that would soon fill its pages. And on the first page, her mother had written an inscription. A great detective never gives up. Love, Mom. Well, that's sweet. <laughs> oh, let's see. All right, so this is the case files tab. For some reason, we have the stickers on the inside. Find a map, keep it here. All right, we got a place for tab. Choosiness. So this is where they list all the choices we made in the game. Uh, so let's see, right now we are listed as a CEO, a dedicated, strong-willed and direct, a brilliant leader who inspires others, a jack of all trades and a fountain of knowledge, but you can be inflexible and emotionally distant. I mean, well, I made one choice that can't really know too much about us yet. So we'll see how that goes. Let's see, background item is that the Viking rune alphabet is called Futhark. I'm aware of that. Had Mjolnir on it, so I looked at it ever curious. Further, showed it has runes on it. They had written Futhark in runes that are named <laughs> So it's like buying a uh, English... So it's kind of like buying an English notebook that just has the word alphabet on the front. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Alright, so you chose a creepy tune for the mysterious man to whistle as opposed to you chose something totally normal for the man to whistle. Yeah, that's what we did. That we did. And the last thing is something to do with postcards? Interesting. I love it. Thanks, Mom. Jenny, I wanted to talk about 
um, to say, uh... Somewhere in the back of Jenny's highly caffeinated brain, an alarm bell was ringing. Her mum was hesitating. What could be causing her to act so out of character? Interesting. Same you sneeze. Welcome in. How are you doing today? Limited eye contact, watery eyes, defensive body language. Cross missing. arms, furrowed brow. Jenny saw it coming from a mile away. Her mother was about to get emotional. Yes. I've really got to go. No, Jenny, wait. I need your help. What? Really? Jenny couldn't believe her ears. It was extremely unusual for her mother to ask for help. It must be something very important. Tracing the steps of a deranged killer? A cold case that only someone with Jenny's expertise could solve? I've misplaced the students' essays on decapitation. See if you can find them for me before you leave. I have to run. Wow. The case of the misplaced papers. Are you sure you want to trust me with such a complex task? I have no doubt you'll be able to find them. They're around here somewhere. Jenny was unsure if her mother was unable to detect sarcasm, or just really good at ignoring it. Yeah. Let's see, got a decent chunk of Halo 2 on Legendary done? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's frustrating, but congratulations on making some progress there. Alright, what do you think, Chad? Should we help Mom, or should we try to wiggle our way out of it? As on one hand, you know, she does need our help, apparently. It would be nice to help. On the other hand, uh, this does sound like bullshit. So I could see either. Yeah, I love the art style in this game, Blackrock. Siamese says help mom. Blackrock says help mom. Nazarene says help mom. All right, all right, well, we'll go ahead and help mom. She is asking for her help here. Okay, mom, I'll find them before I leave. On one condition. Yes? You have to let me help grade them. One of Jenny's favorite pastimes was grading papers. Nothing pleased her more than giving a big shiny F to an overconfident student. Don't push your luck. Please. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Find the papers and go straight home. But I'm meeting Keith tonight. No buts, remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm still feeling the effects of being poisoned for your class. Well then. I have the perfect antidote. You're staying with your cousin this weekend, and you still need to pack. This again? Look, I've considered your offer, Mom, and I'm going to have to decline. I'm old enough to take care of myself. I'll be back late tonight. There's meatloaf in the fridge. Let's see, she kind of reminds me of Futaba from Persona 5. I can see that. Uh, what do you think? Should we question her logic or question her motive here? I'm not quite sure which we should go for. I'm a little torn. I think... I think I'd go for question logic here, personally. I want to hear what you have to say, chat. Hope you say question motive. We could do that. Blackrock, you say motive as well? Feel like Mom just wants some alone time? I'm kind of wondering about that. Like, questioning the motive would be mean, but still, if she does have an ulterior motive, it might be worth questioning it. Alright, you take care of yourself, Rose. Ooh. And thank you for the host. Welcome into Rose Guard's viewers. For anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Shane. That's Shane is Games. I play the obscure, the usual, and the nostalgic. And today, we are playing Jenny LeClue Detective Woo for the PC. Show your badge! We don't have one yet, I don't think. Alright, so we got two for motive. We got one for logic. We'll go for motive then. Late again? What are you up to? Jenny LeClue, it's been a difficult week. Could you please just do what you're told for once and stop asking questions? Fine. And try to stay out of trouble. When do I ever get into trouble? Detective Wu, you, you, welcome in. How are you All doing right. today? Alright, let's find these papers and get out of here. Alright, we need to find some missing papers. That's shitty to grin, very much so. 
One of Jenny's earliest memories was making raspberry jam with her mom. It's the perfect substitute for blood in class demonstrations. And better tasting than the pig's blood the textbook recommends. Is it a good blood substitute? I think the seeds would give it away. It seems like it would give up the game pretty quickly, actually. Ah, some more gallery art. Uh, where else can I explore here? Oh, I can walk over this way a bit. Looking rather trim today, Ethan. New diet? What's the matter? Lost your funny bone? I bet she does that literally daily. <laughs> Usually stick with the ketchup, but it's a little too thick for blood, I think. Uh, I know, uh, what is it, corn, uh, corn syrup, I think, is usually what they recommend for costuming. Corn syrup and red food dye. I've had some friends that have done zombie makeup before. Inspect chalkboard! Becoming a great detective took more than book smarts. You needed real-life experience. And Jenny was always on the lookout for a chance to get her hands dirty. Let's see, a great detective always thinks like a killer, always trusts their instincts, always follows the evidence, always turns in their reports on time, and always knows when to ask for help. A great detective never makes it personal, never makes assumptions, never leaves their coffee unattended, never ever, and never reveals their hand too soon. Grab some gallery art right there. Grab some gallery art right there. On my fries, to be exact. I do like ketchup on my fries as well. For black and white movies that use chocolate syrup, it's really weird to think about it, because in black and white movies, they usually didn't have things be the color you expected them to be, because you wouldn't see the true color on black and white. So they just did whatever would look cool when transferred to black and white. My favorite example, uh, I believe, is the, uh, the Addams Family. Uh, was, was the Adams Family or the Munsters? I think it was the Adams Family. Uh, the house that they had in there uh, was actually pink on the inside. All of it was pink uh, because that's what looked best in uh, black and white. And of course you couldn't tell it was pink because it was black and white. Uh, you'd only know if you were actually there for the filming, which is wild. I love that. Means they're hiding their coffee. Exactly. <laughs> How are you doing today, Nettle Masher? Hope you're doing good. It was Adam's family, thank you, Kiss. I love that. I love that so much. I've seen actual, like, color photos, and it is a trip to see. Oh, I think I see another sticker over here. Yep, there we go. Just time for that game of Gumo. You gotta be quick. You gotta be quick. <laughs> I'm good, Nuddle Masher. Thank you for asking. Please do not touch. Hmm. Someone must be running an experiment. Ooh. Gross. Pretty soon it's gonna sprout legs. Interesting. Journal updated. Why are the stickers on that page? I thought they were on the cover. That might be a glitch. That's so weird. Let's see, someone's growing a strange green liquid. Gross. Yeah, for some reason the stickers get put here. Let's delete those then so we can actually see. Because it's super weird. Can we put them on the cover? See if they'll actually stick this time? We'll at least put the heart uh, nerds on there. Put a couple things on there. Gotta make it look cool, it's important. This is important. Extremely important. There we go. Good enough. Let me get out of that. Cool, cool. Ended up being awake until DHL started delivering things. Holy shit. How are stickers warping through solid matter? That's a little suspicious. Let's see. Mom was acting weird today. No wonder it's been a year, but it still hurts. I wonder what that's all about. We'll find out about that. Alright, so I didn't see any 
hidden papers or anything around here. So what are we missing? See, I don't think I can leave the 2D plane here. Is there something else I can do with my controls that I'm missing? I can't go off to the side. That brings up that. Ah, oh, here we go. So I can use the magnifying glass to search around, so that's probably what we gotta do. Alright, there's nothing there. Good news is you have a freezer again! Ooh, that is a big deal. Congratulations, Kiss. That is fantastic, and I bet it must have sucked not having one. For even a little while. That is bad times. Hopefully it wasn't too hard to get uh, set up and running again for you. That seems like it would be a pain in the ass. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, something on the floor there. Hang on. Hang on. What's this? Dramatic. It's one of the student's term papers. You can tell by the terrible handwriting and erroneous conclusions. Mom must have put them behind the chalkboard. Oh, well. Uh, so, oh, here we go. Grab! Ah, there we go. Found you. Oh. Time to get out of here. Mystery solved. <laughs> Conclusion waste of time. Case closed. <laughs> Easy to go to supermarkets here. I have like two of them in five minute walking distance and three within ten. Holy shit, that's amazing. Conclusion waste of time, I like it. Alright, let's get the hell out of here then. Jenny looked around the room one last time. Was she ready to leave? Oh uh, yeah, we're ready to leave. I got everything I wanted. That's probably if you want to stay and find some more collectibles. Okay, so she wasn't really dead. That would be silly. No, Jenny was alive and well and ready for another perfect day in Arthurton. Yeah, Europe doesn't need the massive fridges that the USA does. It's different, takes some getting used to. I, I do love me a massive fridge. I do. All right, ooh. Once again, loving these graphics. This is gorgeous. What the? What a mess. I should investigate. I suspect it's a cat, but yeah, we'll, we'll go check it out. What do we got going on here? What is that now? Jenny had an instinct for sorting treasure from trash. To the untrained eye, this was just a discarded piece of an old postcard. But to Jenny, it was a mystery waiting to be solved. I should keep my eyes open for any other pieces. The case of the puzzling postcard. All right, Let's see what we can do there. Hey, Rose, welcome back. What were we playing today, Rose? And how did it go? Tell me everything. Anything else in the trash? No. No, nothing over there. I'll see if there's anything else on this screen. That doesn't look like it, though. Alright, what else do we got to see over here? Buying four to six packs of lunch rated time is weird until you get used to it. I dig it, I dig it. Finish the Ascent and start Dying Light 2. Oh, are you liking it so far? I know very little about Dying Light 2, but I loved the first one. Absolutely amazing game. The notice board was awash with flyers, personal ads, and the occasional piece of gum. I'm amazed anyone can find anything on here. Fortunately, Jenny had a useful trick to use in a situation like this. Mom always says, a great detective eliminates the noise. Focus on the details, and you'll find clarity in the chaos. Hey, 
Phenomenon, Mr. Nomenon himself. How are you doing today, Finn? How was your stream? What were you playing? Tell me everything. Yeah, like the gaming show with Shane's awesome. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a really generous raid message. Thank you for that. Who do we have? I see Luna. I see Mr. Nomenon himself, the man of the hour. I see Shuffle Up and Heal. I see Chief Bite Me. That's amazing. I see Ms. Crixie. Who else have we got in here? Uh, Kame, welcome in. Uh, Rat Habregesa, welcome in. Uh, Karmaku, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Good to have you. Vazaril, welcome in. Alchemist Merlin, hope you're doing okay. Kosaku, welcome in. Hope you're doing good. Uh, Darkens, glad to have you with us. Let's see. Zenpachi, how are you doing today? Jenny the Clue, Junior Detective Woo, that is correct, that is correct. Raid message courtesy of our local Markov bot. I love it. I love it. Let's see. Zypara called you out. I'll take it. That's fine with me. <laughs> yeah, how was your stream, Finn? I hope everything was going good. Glad to have you here. Uh, let's see. Ms. Crixie, thank you for the follow as well. I appreciate that. That's when you can mark off off the list. Oh my god. I used to mess around with Markov chains in college when I was doing AI work. Weird stuff. Weird stuff. It, it's fun, but it's kind of a dead end, I think. It can it can do some nice smoke and mirrors, but you'll never actually get anywhere interesting. Let's see. BWA, welcome in. Hope you are doing good. And uh Let's see, Vaxi Man, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hope you're doing good. Kosaku, thank you for the uh, follow as well. For anybody that doesn't know me, my name is Shane. That's Shane is Games. We're playing Jenny LeCou today. And for anybody in here that is not following Phenomenon, you absolutely need to. The man is a whiz and a wonder. Uh, he plays a lot of retro games, including a ton of retro JRPGs, and he's played every Zelda game under the sun. Literally all of them. It's impressive. So make sure you click that link, give him a follow, check him out next time he's live. He is good, people. Says you, I swear that thing is listening to me sometimes. Oh, don't get me wrong, it can be spooky. It can be really spooky, but when I was doing AI work in college, uh, you do a lot of work with conversations, and a Markov bot can sometimes get, like, two or three lines deep into a conversation and be pretty spooky, but it falls apart pretty quickly. Uh, so that's what I mean when I say it's a dead end, is it's... If you want to make, like, an actual bot, like, an actual, like, conversation bot, I, it's it's a neat trick, but it's not uh, the future, I don't think. I'm sorry, I'm overthinking this. I apologize. I'm sort of a nerd when it comes to AI. Uh, let's see. Good news, we taught the computer to think. Bad news, it's very stupid. That's been the problem of IT ever since its inception, I believe. Balls, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing good. <laughs> And Kame, welcome in. Hope you're doing good. All right, so let's see. What are we doing here? All right, so... Trying to narrow down what's on this board here. Let's see what we got. Yeah. Lightly chewed! Missing cat answers to Trevor. I wonder if anyone else reads this junk. Hold on. What's this? Oh Town no, they've extended curfew hours, again. 9 p.m. to sunrise? That's ridiculous. But necessary. Power outages had become a regular occurrence in town. It was dangerous to be wandering around after dark. It won't be long before we need a permit to go out at all. Interesting. Follow starting the day with two cinnamon toast crunch donuts and a nice iced coffee. Hell yeah. Shuffle up and heal, I look like the splitting image of a dear friend of, of mine. Usually I get compared to Pen Gillette. Are you, are you friends with Pen Gillette? That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, uh, town notice curfew. Stay safe, stay indoors. 9 p.m. to sunrise. Please pardon our mess while we improve your power grid. During this period, you may experience minor inconvenience of daily blackouts. That's not a minor inconvenience, I wouldn't think. Well, depending on how long the blackouts last, I think. Uh, Alright, is there anything else here? No, we can't look at the back of it or anything. Well, that is unfortunate. Let's see, anything else going on? Uh, I... 
Have questions? Hey, you! Oh, hi there! What are you doing back there? Well, I was pruning, but then I discovered the cerulean bugberry bush. Discovered? These bushes are all over, Arthurton. Actually, this is an incredibly rare bloom. There's nothing rare about Arthurton. I beg to differ. Arthurton has many beautiful and exotic plants. Chat, are we interested about Arthurton's many beautiful and exotic plants, or are we not interested in Arthurton's many beautiful and exotic plants? I'm curious. Nope, not pen! Oh, shoot, that would be cool, though. <laughs> Vaxi Man, you were thinking pen? I like it. Yeah, Rose Garden, I love this art style. I think it's the color gradients. Like, the, the sort of orange going down to red from the top. It really makes the art pop. I like that a lot. That is very cool. Alright, looks like folks are interested, even though this guy will actually eat us. We're gonna, we're gonna listen to him then. He, he, he Alma actually does, what the hell? But we'll, we'll listen anyway, we'll listen. Really? Like what? Mushrooms with eyes that glow in the dark? What? Berries that emit a bioluminescent mist? And flowers with nectar as sticky as super glue? Where? I've never seen any of those things. Well, believe me, they do exist. I've had the pleasure of seeing them up close. That's one of the privileges of working for Dean Strousberry in his greenhouse. Anyway, I should get back to work. I want everything to be perfect for the Dean's retirement celebration. Did he say mushrooms with eyes? <laughs> He's talking about Pokemon, right? I, I wonder? I'm not sure. Student gardener, annoyingly knowledgeable about Earth and plant life, works with Dean Strasberry in the greenhouse. <laughs> Alright, um... Let's see, alright, so we've got one co postcard piece there. Interesting. Uh, let's see. You never know when random trivia might be crucial and give way to the villain's hidden plot. This is true, Vazero. That's probably the smart thing right there. That is probably the, the wise way. The ascent is extremely detailed, like far more than any RP ARPG has any right to be. Uh, blew me away frequently with a sheer amount of stuff in detail. I gotta check that out there. That sounds amazing. Yeah, Kosaku, that doesn't sound natural. That sounds creepy as hell, as a matter of fact. That sounds weird, I don't like it. Also, I do like me some cyberpunk, so you're selling it hard here, Rose. I gotta check this out then. Uh, let's see, what is here? Pick up gallery item. Oh, more gallery art, we got that. Uh, let's see, is there anything else to see over here? Take a quick look before we head back the other way. Doesn't look like it. Plus one for recommending the ascent. It is a little glitchy, but good times. I can put up with a little bit, Jake. I think if you're gonna survive in the retro space, you've gotta have some tolerance for Jank. And I've played some Jank. I mean, I, keep in mind, I did play the PC version of Deadly Premonition that consistently crashed every 45 minutes. I still can't believe I survived that. I should not. I should have bailed on that, but I persevered. I'd be proud of that, except no one should, no one should do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but Swery, I do love me some Swery. You can play Deadly Premonition, just don't play the PC version. If you can play Deadly Premonition Origins, that's the version that uh, won't make you hate everything ever. That's the one I will recommend, but... You can play the old PS3 version too, just not the PC version. Actually killed your hard drive, Jesus Christ. That's a new one for me, Hope, but it is real bad. Don't play that one. There are ways to make it better, but there is no way to fix it. Believe me, I have looked. <laughs> KK Slider version of Life is Beautiful. That I'd like to check out sometime. Signs and decorations adorned the entire campus. A party to celebrate the Dean's impending retirement. All right. That guy, other guy did mention the Dean's going to be retiring. I do remember that. Anything in the phone booth? This very clearly does take place in the past, since we don't really have phone booths around anymore. Talk to workmen. Left! Left! 
I said left, damn it! What part of left are you having trouble with? My left or your left? My left. Obviously, I mean my left. Why would I mean your left? So you want me to move it the other way? Yes. Nothing would make me happier. If you're not careful, we're gonna have Brown's brains all over the floor. They seem... busy. I should probably lead them to it. Alright, well, good luck with that, dudes. <laughs> Oh, he almost had it. Nope. Nope, it's gone. It was going good for a second that he lost it. Oh, here's the Dean himself. Hello, Mr. Strausberry. How are you today? Les Strausberry, beloved Dean of Gumbolt. A jolly gentleman. The Dean was often seen shaking hands and kissing babies around town. He's also Mom's boss. But more than that, he was her loyal friend. What do you think, Jenny? Laughs like Santa Claus, I like the that. The Dean had dedicated his life to Gumbolt, and the townspeople had spared no expense in their tribute to him. Quite a striking resemblance, Mr. Strasbury. It's a scary thing, Jenny. Retirement. Great excuse for a party, though. <laughs> what will you do when you're no longer the Dean? I've been trying not to think about it. This place won't be the same without you. Things change, Jenny. Time marches on, and we must do our best to adapt. It's going to be difficult, but I'm sure we will get through it. What do you mean, we? Do you think they made my belly too big? Uh, chat? Man's asked us the question, do we be nice or do we be honest? We, we could definitely go either way on this one. Because in, in fairness, they have not made his belly too big. No, he is a very large man, and they have captured it very well. But we can always be nice to him, let him down gently. <laughs> yeah, there are some phone booths around, but they don't really do much that I've seen. I, have, I can't remember the last time I've seen a working one. <laughs> Follow says, be honest. I see a lot of run, don't answer. We gotta say something. I'm not punching him in the knee. We can't flee. We can't flee. That's not an option. <laughs> I see two be honest in there, though, so I think we're gonna have to be honest unless anybody else has something else. We can't run. We can't. We'll, we'll be honest with him. We'll be honest. It might be all those bronze pancakes, Mr. Strasbury. <laughs> <laughs> no legacy is so rich as honesty. <laughs> you are a clever one, Jenny LeClue. Speaking of which, have you been practicing your detective skills? Have I? Of course, always. Well then, I have a challenge for you. I bet you can't guess what I ate for breakfast. Guess. At last, a real challenge for Jenny. A fiendishly difficult puzzle that would take all her wits to solve. <laughs> Chat, do we respect our elders or respect them some other time? <laughs> I love that option. It's so good. I think we should respect our elders because I want to have a puzzle to solve. Let's, let's solve a puzzle. Let's just solve a puzzle. Because that's the thing is, I think if we do respect it some other time, we don't get a puzzle. I would like a puzzle. I want a puzzle right here. <laughs> Everybody wants to do it some other time, though. You folks are mean. Let's see, Phenomenon, I respect her last name so much. LeClue, it's so nice. It's so on the nose. I love it. Yeah, Jenny has zero chill. Holy shit, she is so mean. <laughs> yeah, let's go for the puzzle. I want, I want a puzzle. I want a puzzle. <laughs> let's go for that. Well, okay. Anything for you, Mr. Strausbury. Oh, how wonderful. But first, I need to ask you a few questions. The interrogation of Dean Strausbury. All right. What do we got here? What do we got? Basketball game today? 
The Dean was a big fan of the Gumbolt Moonbeams. And not just because his son was a prominent figure on the team. Well, a bench warmer anyway. Ouch. Alright, what else do we have? We need more clues here. Powder! No dandruff because he has no hair. It can't be dandruff. He has no hair. I have a hunch it's powdered sugar. Ooh, alright, that, that narrows it down, if so. That does narrow it down right there. What do we have here? Looks like he accidentally put a spoon in his pocket instead of his pen. It's got a coffee stain on it. I was going to say, I hope that was put there accidentally, because otherwise the man is way too dedicated to his breakfast game there. <laughs> you got to respect your bench warmers, you know? They're, they're there in case they're needed. That's important. <laughs> uh, what else have we got going on here? Oh, hello. Oh, more gallery art. Take that. Uh, anything on his face? No, nothing up there. What else have we got going on? Hello. Missing a button right there, but we can't look at it. What else have we got? Solid gold. His watch is slow. That's unlike the Dean. He's usually very punctual. Interesting. Your watch is 45 minutes slow. Is it? Oh my! That explains why there was no cheesecake left in the cafeteria. <laughs> my head's not screwed on today. Thank goodness you noticed, or I'd be late for my meeting with your mother. Oh really? She didn't mention anything to me. Oh, well, of course she wouldn't. It's nothing important. Why are you meeting then? It's just, um, she's helping me finalize my, my plans for, uh... Your party? Yes, that's it. My retirement party. Thank you. Are you okay, Mr. Strasberry? Of course. Now let me just fix my watch before I forget. <laughs> now, where were we? Interesting, interesting. Hey, some guy in a hat. Welcome in. Nope, we beat good life yesterday, so we're moving on. How are you doing today, though? This man cannot lie, it would appear so. Very, very forward about all this. <laughs> Alright, what else we got going on here? Ooh. Ipsa scientia potestas est. Looks like Latin. Your ring sure looks old. It was made for my grandfather. He passed it down to my father, who passed it down to me. And when the time comes, I'll pass it on to my son. The Strausberry family had been champions of education for generations. What does the inscription mean? Knowledge itself is power. The inquisitive spirit is a mighty thing, Jenny. And nothing is as important as the truth. Strangely ominous, but all right, we'll keep going there. Ooh, shiny, that's me. I get distracted by shiny things very easily. <laughs> Dude, use the force to change his watch time? I wish I could do that. That sounds rad. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, hello. For the Dean, being covered in plant life was not unusual. His work as a botanist was renowned. Looks like you're carrying some extra baggage today, Mr. Strasbury. Well, I do have a lot on my mind. I was referring to your legs. Oh, thank you. I have been doing my daily calisthenics. No, I, I mean the sticky stuff on your pants. What? Oh! Hitchhikers. I've been working on a new orchid hybrid in my greenhouse. They're beautiful, but the leaves are quite clingy. I will say, I am looking forward to spending more time in the dirt. What did he think we were talking about? I have a lot of questions now. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> also, I was gonna say before, I don't think I could ever trust anybody that says, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my retirement. Why not? Because right now, I want to be retired this second because I've got about a bajillion things I want to do. How can somebody not know what they're gonna do when they don't have to work? 
What? I don't understand that. I don't understand that in the slightest. Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. <laughs> Alright, what else have we got? What else have we got? We need to find two more clues here somewhere. Uh, oh, here we go. We gotta look with the magnifying glass. The dean didn't button his shirt properly. It looks like a blood stain, but the seeds indicate otherwise. So he's got a jam stain and he missed a button right there. That's interesting. I would keep doing the exact same thing as I do for a living, so why retire? I mean, if you got that going for you, I respect that. That is fair. Let's see, if you're one of the extremely rarely lucky that it's a job they enjoy more than anything in retirement can be scary. Yeah, I get that too. I get that. That's fair. That I can understand. All right, what else? What else have we got here? Gotta be one more clue somewhere. I think it's probably gonna be another magnifying glass thing. Yeah, it is, all right. What is in his pocket here? Shaky penmanship, unusually cluttered. A thick bundle of note cards poked out of the Dean's pocket. What's he keeping so close to his chest? You've been making a lot of notes, Mr. Strasbury. Oh, I was intending to make a speech on Saturday. Why have you scratched out so much of it? Your mother suggested I keep it short, and quite right, too. I must have rewritten it 20 times by now. I just can't seem to find the right words. So, what do you think, Jenny? Can you guess what I had for breakfast? Sure, Mr. Strasbury. I've got everything I need to solve this mystery. All right, what, what did... What did the Dean eat for breakfast? Well... Let's see, there's a couple things we can see right here. And we know there's powdered sugar on his bow tie, and we know there's... A jam st stain on his shirt button. Let's work on those. Jam on his shirt and powdered sugar on his tie. The evidence points strongly to the Dean's breakfast consisting of one, maybe two donuts. There we go! Done! I was what else can I tell about the Dean's morning? I was never a jelly donut man myself. Let's see. For breakfast, you feasted on the foul fruits of crime. <laughs> All right. What else can we tell about the Dean's morning? Well, uh, there's a spoon in his pocket rather than a pen. That seems important. Uh, let's see. The moonbeams are playing this weekend. And his watch is an hour slow. That's not right. Back to the drawing board. Nope, not those. Uh, let's see. Let's see, the spoon is right, I think the pocket watch is right, and the button is buttoned incorrectly. Let's try that. Aha! Uh -huh. The Dean had neglected to wind his pocket watch. The act of a distracted man. This resulted in his whole routine being thrown off. Which might explain why he has a spoon in his pocket instead of a pen. Alright, distracted by something. Uncharacteristic. You had a donut for breakfast. Yes? I'm guessing... Ooh, strawberry or raspberry? I'm guessing a strawberry, because we know there's strawberry jam inside the science lab. But, uh, Strawberry, that's not an option! I mean, I mean, unless that's, like, strawberry. Possibly. Ruffle Coop, how are you doing today, though? Good to have you. Let's go strawberry. Let's, I'm, I'm feeling strawberry. Strawberry. <laughs> how did you know? That part was easy. You always have donuts for breakfast. 
but something else caught my attention. Oh? I think you have something on your mind, Mr. Strasberry. You are usually a picture of precision and punctuality. But today, there's a spoon in your pocket and your shirt button is undone. My, my. You really are a Leclou. Your father would be so proud. Thanks. Well, I should be going. I'm meeting your son by the lake. <laughs> and I'm meeting your mother in the library. What a small world this is. Too small. A perfectly small world with everything in its right place. Who would want to change that? Pardon? Nothing. See you on Saturday. Oh, yes. Until we meet again, Jenny LeClue. Journal updated. Uh, let's see. I don't think I've ever seen a raspberry donut. I've seen raspberry pastries before, but not a raspberry donut proper. How about you, Chad? Have you ever seen one of those before? I'm curious. Snozberries. He's got the physique of someone who fills a bowl with donuts and eats it for breakfast. I mean, me too, so I can't really judge. <laughs> a, ras I, I like a raspberry donut I could see being tasty, but I don't think I've ever seen one before. Yeah, there's definitely raspberry jam, and I've seen raspberry uh, different types of raspberry pastries, but not donuts, necessarily. I should clarify for folks, she's actually, uh, he is uh, her mother's boss, since he's the dean of the college that she works at. That is, that is her boss right there, so that explains some of it. Vaxi Man, thank you for the follow, I appreciate that. Let's see, donuts do not exist in my vicinity long enough for me to take long-term notice of their exact filling. Fair enough, fair enough. I technically they dislike raspberries. Understandable. Alright, what else do we got going on then? I love the parallax background here. That is beautiful. There's so many layers to it. That is really well done. Congrats to the game devs on that. Quick peek around here, looking for secrets. What? Well, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> In her short time as a detective, Jenny had learned never to ignore a ringing phone. Yeah, we should probably look into that. Hello? loudest before the dawn what cj is that you the dog barks loudest before the dawn really this again it's me jenny we don't need to do this i have no idea who you are and i know no one by that name the dog barks loudest before the dawn fine Oh jeez, what what are we going for? Are we going for a horse or a bird here? Clearly we need some sort of code. What are you thinking, shit? I honestly have no idea. I'll go with whatever you guys think is the, the right thing. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be at least five or six layers of background there, Rose. That's oh, absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, payphones! This seems to take place in the past. Because we've seen payphones, we've seen rotary phones, we've seen a... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Typewriter as well. So there is a lot going there. Sounds like we got a lot of people singing bird. Alright, let's go bird. Bird is the word. B -b -b bird, bird, bird. Bird is the word. The early bird can't catch the lazy worm. Good. The wind blows strongly from the east. God, there's more. Alright. Uh, do we go for glass houses or washed pot? I have no idea if he's having any effect on anything, but uh, we've got no clues here for anybody joining us. This isn't a puzzle. I don't know. I don't think there's anything uh, leading us one way or the other. I'm just curious what you guys want me to pick here. We can lean in that direction. It's fine. The Watcher Bear scampers on the dust boat. I like that. I want to use that as a code sometime. Glass houses? We'll go for glass houses then. Let's do that. People in glass houses should invest in curtains. Ha! Ah, excellent! The evening sky is full of fireflies. Ooh, goldfish or donut? I think you know what I want to do here, Chet. 
I am a donut man myself. I love me some donuts. I don't know what my favorite donut is. They used to have a really good vanilla filled donut at Dunkin' Donuts, but they haven't had that in a very long time. I'm seeing a lot of donut here. Let's go donut. Let's go donut. The last donut is the tastiest. Ah! Jenny, it is you! Of course it is! I need to meet with you right away. Okay. Where do you want to meet? This place will do. Ah! Everyone in town knew that CJ was mad, even dangerous. He's not dangerous. He just doesn't accept things at face value. Sure, he's a bit fixated on extraterrestrials, but at least he's passionate about something. CJ and Jenny certainly indulged each other's obsessions. But most of all, CJ treated Jenny like a colleague. And not a little kid. CJ, why did we go through all that if you're right here? Can't be too careful. Are you sure you weren't followed? Who would be following me? Shh! This place is compromised. We don't have long to talk. He does sound like Doc Brown. I love the voice. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? What? You called me. Did I? Why? Talking to CJ was a bit like navigating a maze. You had a rough idea of where you were headed, but you couldn't be sure you'd ever get there. I'll help you figure it out. The interrogation of CJ. So we have a new mystery now, Chet, and our new mystery is... What the fuck? <laughs> Join me, Chet, as we navigate the case of... What? <laughs> Let's see where we're going here. Jay Malman, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Yeah, he really is doing a fantastic Christopher Lloyd... Uh, Impression. I like that a lot. Ooh. I knew he was hiding something. A compass with strange symbols where the cardinal direction should be. Looks broken. Where did you get that compass? Ah, you spotted it. I knew you would. It belonged to my father. He left it to me to find the truth. You're not going to find anything with that. The needle is wandering all over the place. A bit like you. It's searching. For what? For them. It's this town, Jenny. It's Arthur. They're here, among us. And this proves it. Or it could just be broken. Could be. I guess we'll never know. The symbols immediately make me think of uh, Gravity Falls. I love that show. Very good show right there. What else we got? I see a sticker there. What happened that? Do we have any more stickers? Let's do a quick sweep for those. Make sure we get those before anything. There's one right there. Um, anything else? What is this? Tucked in socks, not a good hiding place. What's that sticking out of your sock? Ah! That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I intercepted a secret message. Classified intel. It's proof, Jenny. It's happening again. It's time for us to join the fight. This doesn't look like the kind of pamphlet he usually makes. It's being professionally printed. Could CJ finally be on to something? Aliens are among us, and they are coming for your pets. Are you prepared? Will you answer the call? Interesting. <laughs> uh, let's see, what do we got? Can we... Join the space oh, kit? It's just part of a cereal box. Oh, <laughs> a cereal box from another space-time continuum? Nope, just a regular cereal box. It's an ad for a toy. But why? Why would it just be lying there in the trash? <sighs> this guy is really bad at just life. Just brains in general. No more coke for 
break it, CJ. It doesn't seem to be doing him well. I'm sorry, CJ. There are still great mysteries out there to solve, but this isn't one of them. Jenny had uncovered why CJ had contacted her, but something else had caught her eye. And yeah, what's in his hand right there? Yeah, whose birthday? Is it your birthday, CJ? Birthday? Whose birthday? Kikes' it's birthday. But Kikes had died on his birthday. Assassination? Possibly. Abduction? Almost certainly! CJ, the card? Oh, this. It's for you. What? Impossible shot. Died instantly. No suspects. No human suspects, anyway. What? <laughs> wow, right to the point. L little blunt. A little bit blunt, I'd say. Thanks, CJ. That's, uh, thoughtful. I didn't think you'd remember. I know what it's like to lose something important to you. Now triple shred and incinerate that card as soon as possible! It's got my fingerprints all over it! So what's the plan now? Library. Research. Very important. Very hush-hush. They let you back in? Not yet. But I've got this hat now! It wasn't your head that needed covering. No, for disguise! I know, CJ. What is it this time? More UFOs? Radio wave mind control? A globally connected communication network used exclusively to view pictures of cats? Jenny, you sound crazy. I'm just preparing my defense for the hearing. Is this because you tried to hypnotize Mrs. Brown's prize poodle? No. That was last week. It's because I peed in the water tower. CJ, CJ. that's gross. And this is the thanks I get for saving everyone from the mind control chemicals. Well, I guess I'll see you later then. But CJ was gone. CJ, I know you're standing behind the phone booth. I just watched you walk over there. No, I'm not. Okay then, bye. See you later. <laughs> he tried to Batman anyway. <laughs> Rose, the writing in this game is so hilarious so far, I'm liking it. Conduit, welcome in. How are you doing today, Conduit? Hope everything's going good with you. <laughs> She's trying, Maxi Man, but she just can't with this guy. She cannot. <laughs> I like the word, the, the note where she, he said, I've got a hat now, and she said, your head wasn't what needed covering. Wait, what? CJ, what did you do? <laughs> this game's got jokes! This game's got jokes! We don't know what CJ stands for. We got the secret code there, we've established that, so that's a good thing. <laughs> voice acting's a lot of fun. I can't believe this game originally launched with no voice acting. That's wild to me. Hey, Kiwi, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you are doing good. Alright, so that was the whole thing. It was an entire thing. Oh, hey, this is one of the girls that was in the classroom earlier. Hey! Ah! Damn, that's the third time today. Oops. Hi, Jenny. Great job solving that case today. It's really cute, the way that you and your mom work together. I wish I was that close with my parents. Enough chit-chat. Got anything new for me? Oh, yes. This is the real deal, hot off the press. I haven't had a chance to distribute these yet, so keep them to yourself. Ada and Jenny belonged to one of the oldest societies in Arthurton. An eclectic band of treasure hunters, collectors, creators, and dealers. Together, they were known as... Sticker Club! Oh my god. For generations, Gumbolt students had been hiding and finding stickers all over town. Officially, Jenny was too young to join. But she'd found so many stickers on her own that they'd made her an honorary member. Sticker club. Sure! <laughs> Zenpachi, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Let's see. Yeah, Jenny's, Jenny's just a little kid, so everybody's pretty much everybody's taller than her. <laughs> Let's see. 
Nice crisp edges, rich colors. Very tacky. Thanks. I spent all week making these. If only you spend as much time in your schoolwork, you might not be failing my mom's class. Jenny! Uh, Jenny thought to herself. It's to celebrate the Dean's retirement. I'm super sad that he's leaving, but... It's a perfect reason to make new stickers. Exactly. Oh, we're going on an epic sticker hunt before the Dean's party. You should join us. Even if Jenny had wanted to join them. And I don't. She knew she'd be stuck with her cousin all weekend. Thanks, but I work alone. Oh, okay. See you around, Jenny. I got an achievement called the first rule of sticker club. That's amazing. How old is she, 10 or so? I think around there, 10 or 11, I'm guessing. I don't think they said, uh, concretely. <laughs> yeah, they, they, added, they put the storyline reason for the stickers. That's really cute. I do like that. Shane's stickers when You know, I actually had some stickers that I gave out at uh, uh, TwitchCon 2019. But I didn't have enough to actually sell to anybody, and I have no idea how to mail things internationally. But I did have a couple of them. There was that, at least. And if there's ever demand for merch, you guys gotta let me know. I'll see what I can do. Let's see, does Jenny have friends? Supposedly she's friends with the Dean's son. We're supposedly going to meet him. But yeah, she does seem a little bit of a jerk. It's true. <laughs> Some more gallery art. I'll take that. Alright. Hey, Allie Lordswood. Welcome in. How is your weekend going? How's everything been? Hope you are doing well. Glad to have you with us. Alright. Something else here. More gallery art. We'll take that. Yeah, the music's really charming. It's not, like, super intrusive, but it really fits the mood, I think. Lake Nowhere, one mile. Let's see. Good week off. Oh, nice, nice! Sounds fantastic. Nice and relaxing way to start the year, I think. Awesome. I like Jenny, but I can see why she might not have a lot of friends. She does definitely come off as a little abrasive. This is true. Uh, we already got everything here. I'm pretty confident, so we'll go ahead and leave. All right, stop! Whoa! Perfect. Hold it right there. No. No, that okay. is not... Okay. Let her go. That is not perfect. Don't you... Oh, dear. That was ominous. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. I'm sure nothing will come of it. Detective for Hire. Jenny had saved up the whole summer to place an ad in the local paper, but no one had answered it. Until now. What could this new case be? Her imagination ran wild, picturing the possibilities. And so, after helping her mom at Gumbolt College, she hurried to the pier at Lake Nowhere to rendezvous with her new client and crack another thrilling case. So for anybody to join us, there's basically two levels to the story in here. You've been seeing Jenny before, but it turns out Jenny is basically like a Nancy Drew type character. And we're also seeing her author as he writes her. And what happens is apparently uh, the, the series has been going on for like 30 years and I think 38 books. And they've all been kind of like cozy mysteries, very inconsequential, uh, nothing big happening in Jenny's world. Uh, but he's been told by his publisher that sales are way, way down and the series is going to be canceled unless he punches it up. So the, the author has been told to include a real actual murder and real actual dramatic stakes in this book. He really, really doesn't want to do that, but he also doesn't want to have the series get canceled. So he's been struggling to figure out how to resolve the uh, the conflict right there. Uh, so yeah, that's the, the author we've got there. That's why he's been breaking the fourth wall. Which is kind of cool. I like the, the two-layer storytelling right there. That's pretty interesting. Should have quit while he was ahead. I like what you did there. And yeah, they were talking about decapitation reports in the uh, classroom too. So I'm, I'm sensing a theme. 
I'm sensing a theme. Yeah, Jenny's like 10. They can't put actual murders in there. Literal children cannot investigate actual murders. That's insane. <laughs> I don't know what they want from him. But uh, I guess I guess we'll find out. Alright, what do we got here? Something to investigate? Oop. What is this? More gallery art, cool. Plot protection, I sure hope so. Can't kill off the protagonist. As Jenny neared the edge of the woods. Got a little bit of floating text right there. <laughs> Rin, thank you for that. Good morning. <laughs> Let's see, she heard a sudden strange sound. Oh god! What the Hey kid! Watch where you're going! What? Hey, screw you! Your wrench nearly cracked my head open! Oh no! It's not damaged, is it? That's my lucky wrench! Yeah, lucky it didn't kill me! When's this upgrade gonna be finished anyway? Look, kid, I just go where they tell me. Every night, another power surge. Every morning, another part of the grid fry. And I'm out here fixing it. Do I get any thanks? No. What's causing all the outages? At the moment, a little red-headed girl. Now throw me my wrench, kid. Literally never throw wrenches. I don't care if somebody's asking, don't throw wrenches. That's insane. That's craziness. Oh god, I will forget that one, Rin. I'll be very confused. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, what do you think, Chet? Should we do as we're told, or do we have more questions here? Personally, I've got more questions, but what do you guys want? We can go either way. Vaxi Man says ask some more questions. I, I do kind of want that. I want to see what we're, what we're doing here. Do as we're told. Come on. Lead to no! <laughs> we're not eating a wrench. That People will die. People will die. <laughs> Looks like I have all the leverage. So tell me, what exactly is taking so long with these repairs? Apart from shoddy workmanship, that is. Ooh. Hey, we're busting our butts to keep your lights on. These lines should be lasting for decades, but they're burning out after just a few weeks. It's the strangest thing. Anyway, toss me my wrench. But be careful. It's a family heirloom. <laughs> Uh, we got some more questions here, I think. Why does an electrician eat a plumber's wrench? I'm wondering if he doesn't know what he's doing. I'm kind of getting a theory he might not have any idea what he's doing here. <laughs> yeah, screw doing what we're told. The, guys, the guy could have killed us. We could have died. Child murder could have happened here today. <laughs> yeah, Kosako, I think somebody's maybe uh, putting a drain on the system, but who and for what? Hey, Punisher, welcome in. How are you doing today? More questions! But what could possibly be using that much power? You're killing me, little girl! <laughs> Arthurton's a tiny town. The mines are practically shut down. So what could it be? Surely someone must know. All I know is I got three more jobs today, and I can't finish any of them without my wrench. So, will you please just give it back already? Fine. I've got bigger fish to fry. Oh god! Thanks, kid! What is he using a wrench on a power line? It's Bitcoin! Oh god, that would actually explain a lot. <laughs> I just want to repeat for anyone in here don't eat wrenches! Don't do it! Do not throw wrenches, people will die! Holy crap! That was a nice toss. I would not trust myself to toss a wrench to somebody on the top of a power line. That's insane. Huh. Another piece of a postcard right there. I think we need six total to finish that one, so it'll be a while before we actually get to do it. As Jenny that. stepped out of the dark forest, she saw warm sunlight reflecting off the cool lake. And next to that, something even cooler. <laughs> Keith Stroudsbury. <laughs> Come on, Keith! Dance like you beat it! <laughs> Not so much grinding! 
<laughs> oh, Keith, what are you doing? Not everyone saw it, but to Jenny, there was something special about Keith. He's just happy being himself. Nothing seemed to bother him. Not even having to dance in a costume for a dollar an hour. But Jenny was not so laid back. Not when it comes to standing up for a friend. Especially her only friend. For anyone who is asking, there's your answer right there. <laughs> That's the accepted self-defense, yeah, but to understand you're going to be murdering whoever you're uh, having to defend yourself uh, against. I'm very confused here. Dollar an hour? That's, that's brutal. Exploitation? Please, it's so little. Even if this does take place in the past, and I believe it does, that's... That's not a lot of money. Also, I want to stress for anybody who's new here, the coffee shop he's working for. The, uh, the slogan of this coffee shop is, The ends justify the beans. Which is the best joke I've seen in this game so far. I love that so much. It makes me so happy. Something else hidden here. It's so good! It is so good! Gallery art. Restore Keith's dignity! There's a quest I can get behind. I think there's been enough dancing for one day, don't you? Hey, Jenny. Hello. Susan. Actually, I prefer Susie. Busy laughing while others earn a living, Susan? Not everyone's got your dad's money, I guess. Whoa. Jenny! Hi! Tall and handsome, with intense, mysterious eyes. Cool should have been his middle name, instead of Tarquin. But Keith was so cool, he didn't even mind. Give me one minute. I'm just finishing my... Sure. Don't let me interrupt your work. My shift ends... In 15 minutes, I know. I'm early. I'm meeting a client over at the dock. Paid case. Could be big. Real big. Couldn't be as big as her head. <laughs> Wow, that's really... Impressive? Maybe. All I care about is keeping this town crime-free. <laughs> the only crime here is that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Back in a minute, Keith. I'll have the usual. Ooh, when it comes to coffee, do you think Jenny is a sweet tooth or a purist? Personally, I have a sweet tooth. I usually do one sugar and a generous helping of uh, cream. But uh, I have no idea what Jenny would actually be. Oh, I see two purists. I see two sweet tooth. No, four purists. Five purists. All right, I guess we're going purist right here. <laughs> She's clearly a tryhard. <laughs> All right, let's go purist then. Let's do it. Straight up and hot. Nothing fancy. You got it. All right, yeah, Jenny woke up this morning and chose violence. Jesus. Jesus. He seems nice, though. A little naive, but if he puts up with Jenny, that's, uh... I respect his work ethic. <laughs> yeah, Alchemist Merlin, I can see that, too. That would make sense. I mean, it would... I, I've never known ten-year-olds that like coffee at all, in any capacity, so she's already confusing me. You know, sweet or not, I don't know any ten-year-olds that like coffee, in any form. Um, do we have something else we need to examine here? I noticed a little diamond up there. I don't know if that's something we need to look at right now. I guess not. Really, Leantu? Holy shit. I only started a few years ago. <laughs> I'm kind of late to the game. What is going on over here? Brett! How about now? Move it to the left a bit. What's he doing up there? Not now, kid. We're busy. Any better? No, keep going. No. Yes, it's working. Hold it right there. That's what all the fuss is about. Not this guy again. What is that? Whatever it is, it's not my music. Maybe it's jazz. Shh. I'm trying to listen. You shush. I'm the DJ. I'm in charge. When's this party getting started, boys? Oh, uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, how are we supposed to dance to this? 
I think we're losing them. Another station must be interfering with the signal. But there aren't any other stations in Arthurton. Wait! All these wires must be acting as a giant antenna. Jenny listened closely to the mysterious transmission. It was like no other radio broadcast she'd heard before. Hold it steady! Sorry, I'm trying! That's just getting worse. You might as well come down. No, wait! I can almost make out what they're saying. But just like that, the sound faded away. What did you do? That's no use. Come on. We gotta get this equipment back to the AV department by six. Jenny was so lost in contemplation, she'd almost forgotten the case at hand. My client. I'm supposed to meet her at the dock. That sounded like a number station. That's pretty interesting. Oh man, I love me some Ed Ed and Eddie. Fantastic. Shuffle up, you started drinking coffee at seven. Interesting. I gotcha, Lee, too. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, why do they not have, like, a mount for the antenna? What do they expect to do? Him just stand up there for an hour? I'm curious. Jazz? Oh, no. <laughs> I love the horror in his voice there. That was amazing. Danger. No swimming. Sounds safe. Hated coffee ever since you first tasted it. See, I didn't like coffee when I first tried it either. I think what I didn't understand is it's like... It's like trying Coke and saying you don't like pop. There's actually lots of different kinds, so it's possible to find one that still works for you. And that's what I did. I eventually found a kind that worked for me there, too. Luna having a bagel of locks this morning as I de-stress from everything. Ooh, that sounds like a good way to start. Hopefully that'll work for you. Kosaki likes the smell. It does have a good smell. Rin, thank you so much for the link there. I appreciate that. It's an interesting topic, most uh, definitely, because we don't 100% know what they're all about. We're pretty sure, but we don't 100% know. Hmm. How do I get this ladder down? Ooh, do we shake it or do we kick it? Personally, I am always on team give it a good solid kick. But uh, if, if you have different ideas here, chat, I'm willing to listen. Kosaku says shake. We can do that too. Allie Lordswood says kick. I like that. What are you thinking, folks? Kick it like in Dark Souls? That is how you get the letters down in Dark Souls. I can't confirm. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Now I'm going to have the EOS stuck in my head. <laughs> Let's see. I, two, I see two shake and I see four kick. All right. Let's go ahead and kick it then. Kick it old school. I'm getting a kick out of this. Ah! <laughs> Can we shake it then? Let's try that. That didn't work. Nope, it's stuck fast, unfortunately. We have to find a better way then. Let's head to the end of the pier, see if we can find our client, perhaps. Huh. More gallery art right there. Also because of the human taste buds, the bitter taste buds don't really develop until adulthood. That's true. That would make sense. Why uh, kids don't like it so much. I mean, I still don't like the taste of bitter all that much, but... You know, there's, there's different types of coffee, and you can get some that are a little, have a little bit more chill, shall we say, than others. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be rusted, like, solid. And that's always a, a lot of frustration to work with. When, like, the two pieces of metal are rusted together, that sucks. Don't care for it. Aha! Got you this time, you slippery fella! Ah, shucks. Just another boot. Don't put it back! <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Humdrum. Oh my! If it isn't little Jenny LeClue. What a glorious day, don't you think? As far as Jenny was concerned, small talk was like a second pair of underpants. Uncomfortable and completely unnecessary. <laughs> but Mom always says, create a good rapport and they'll reveal everything to you. So she gave it a shot. Well, do we talk about fishing, or do we talk about the weather? They are two very plausible avenues of small talk we could go for right now. What are you thinking? 
Let's see, Punisher, you're not big on bitter. I like bitter in very small amounts. Like a tiny bit of dark chocolate. I enjoy that from time to time. <laughs> Black instant because I'm an actual monster. Wow, I couldn't go for that. Let's see, Rin, I gotta say, if I were scanning through the radio and came across a number station, I'd be a little creeped out too. They're just sort of inherently creepy. Who's returned the boot to its habitat? Oh god. Yeah, fishing seems like the, the right option here. Let's go for fishing. How's the fishing? Oh, the fishing's great, but the catching is bad. All I'm getting are old boots and strange bits of metal. But just look out there, Jenny. She's got that wonderful afternoon glow. No one knew why the lake glowed at night, and few were brave enough to swim its murky waters. What lay beneath its depths was the stuff of myth and legend. Somewhere out there lies the giant red herring, or so they say. Really? But no one's ever caught one. Sounds fishy to me. Well, if she's out there, I'll catch her. Someday. Great. Well, now that we have a good rapport, where can I find Mrs. Humdrum? <laughs> well, she's down there on the ridge. Huh. Only okay. one problem. I think the ladder is broken. Ah, yes. There's a knack to it. First you shake it, then you kick it, and then you push it. Sounds unnecessarily complicated. Well, I'll join you down there in a bit. Just have to sort my tackle out. All right, we just had to know the neck. There we go. The boot was so small it had to be thrown back. You got to keep the boot ecosystem evened out. This is true. <laughs> yeah, apparently the lake glows. That's kind of creepy. I think... From what we saw in the prologue of the game, there might be something under the lake. But we'll have to see. <laughs> shake it! Kick it! Push it! Bop it! <laughs> Alright, let's try this. So we shake it first. Then we kick it. <laughs> I love that kick. Then we push it. Did the trick. The neck. Yeah, underwater dome, possibly. Maybe the conspiracy theory guy was onto something. You never know. Yeah, just keep the ladder down. Why would you pull it up? What is the point of pulling it up? Mrs. Humdrum, I presume? Oh, hello! Uh, you? I'm the private detective you contacted. Show credentials or whisper secret code? I, I, do we have a secret code? Do we have credentials? I... The, <laughs> says so we actually have a chance to show our badge if we have a badge. Maybe. <laughs> Rin says secret code. I've got three for credentials, assuming we have a badge, maybe. <laughs> Lead and whisper in your potato. That's not the creepiest thing that happens to me in all month. All right, let's see if we have some credentials to show her then. Let's see. Jenny LeClue, at your service. It's just a I'm note. here to solve your case. Who is it, Dan? <laughs> it's Jenny, dear, the LeClue girl. She doesn't see so well without her glasses. Oh, hello, Jenny. I'm afraid I don't see so well without my glasses. We got that, yep. Nothing wrong with her hearing, though. <laughs> what did she say? I said there's nothing wrong with your hearing, dear. Oh, no, thank you. I've already eaten. Oh, this will be fun. I believe you have a case for me? We do. We, we do. Great. So what's the trouble? Haunted by the ghost of a former lover? Worried you're being poisoned by a mad uncle? Something so dark and gruesome I can't even begin to imagine the horror? Well, I've lost my reading glasses. Oh. And there it was. A real case. A confounding mystery to challenge Jenny's brilliant mind. <sighs> I thought this was finally going to be a good one. What do you think, Jenny? Can you help? Sure, Mr. Humdrum. I'm gonna need to ask you a few questions. The case of the missing glasses. <laughs> All right, let's see what we can find out here. What can we discover? 
expensive hairdo. Over six inches Looks tall. Freshly piece. blow dry. A professional job. Your hair looks lovely today, Mrs. Humdrum. Is that a new style? Thank you. I had it done yesterday. Dan didn't notice. Oops. They call it the Queen's Quaff. Well, it's certainly big. And expensive. <laughs> but I'm worth it, Dan. Who could put a price on that beautiful head of hair? You're not so bad yourself, hot stuff. <laughs> Gross. I've never been interrogated before. This is such fun. They're cute. I like that. <laughs> my glasses. I can't see you without my glasses. <laughs> All right. What else have we got here? Let us learn more about this lady. Uh, something to do with the magnifying glass here? It says there is, but I don't see anything here. Weird. Uh, oh, it's over here, I think. Oh, I see what we gotta I find. Right there. Oh, it's a uh, Greyhound racing. Jenny had often snuck through the hole in the fence at Grubman's to watch the races. She could understand why the dogs ran so hard. They were chasing the promise of food. What the adults were chasing was less relatable. I notice you're a gambler, Mrs. Humdrum. You've been to the Greyhound races. That was yesterday. We always go to Grubman's on Wednesday. Interesting. You really are very good. The best. How long have you been solving mysteries for- I'll ask the questions, thank you. <laughs> It's more questioning than interrogating, but she's trying real hard to make it interrogation. She's trying. She's trying. <laughs> Fully Biscuit, I do like that name. 30 times magnification. Do you often carry a pair of binoculars? She doesn't go anywhere without them. I presume you don't wear your glasses when you use the binoculars. No, I can't get my eyes close enough to the eye cups. Hmm, I see. Did you take your binoculars with you to the races? Of course. Those critters are so tiny, I can't keep up without my binoculars. Interesting. Yeah, I think I see What's where this next? is going. Fingerprints? Oh, polygraph test? It's like you're reading my mind. Yeah, I think I see where this is going, but we gotta find three more clues first. Let's keep looking around here. I notice you're a gambler and heavily in debt to the mob. What have you done? Nice use of colors. I expect you're finding it difficult to paint without your glasses. Oh no, I never wear them when I paint. I like to feel the canvas, to interpret the colors. She's an incredible painter. You should have her paint you. Thanks, but I don't mix business with pleasure. <laughs> Have you figured it out yet? The suspense is killing me. She's such a nerd. <laughs> I think I see. Yep. Oh, we found a new sticker. Excellent. It's a cute one. I like it. And there's another gallery piece up here. I'll take that as well. Happy old trees. No accidents. No accidents. Uh, we got something hidden here as well. Cut on her pants. Interesting. Snagged on something? That's a large hole. She must have caught it on something. Did you have trouble climbing down the ladder, Mrs. Humdrum? Why, yes I did. How on earth did you know? There's a tear in your pants pocket. Well, what do you know? I didn't realize these pants even had pockets. I feel like you know more about me than I do. <laughs> She is a little bit spooky, this is true. Uh, I thought there was something to look at on the canvas, but I could be wrong there. Anything down here? Up, oh, we got another gallery art. Almost missed that one. That is a lie? Yeah, I was just thinking that. I'm like, no, she'd know. She'd know if it had pockets or not. 
That's insane. Anywhere where his lady's clothing knows exactly what clothing has pockets, that's just what I was thinking. That's suspicious right there. What motive does she have to lie to us? What are you hiding, you monster? <laughs> I'll get to the bottom of this. I'll find your secrets. I read one more clue here. Oh, here we go. Jenny recognized the distinctive indentations left behind by a pair of spectacles. She must have been wearing them recently. You still have marks from your glasses on the bridge of your nose. You probably lost them within the last day or two. Oh, I never would have thought of that. When do you last remember wearing them? I'm really not sure. Dan? You had them at your Tuesday book club. Oh, yes. We're reading Fifty Shady Graves. You are so thorough. Any more questions? I think I have everything I need to wrap this one up. I think I know where, where they are, are too. Dale's glasses? I believe so. Have I heard of I Divine Cybermancy? Yes, and I do have a copy of that one. I'm a little afraid of it, because the level of jank in that game seems terminal. But uh, yeah, I, there is a very good possibility we could play I at some point on here. That's a good call there, Siamese. Alright, so... Let's see, Gail removes her uh, glasses when she uses the binoculars. Gail was at the Greyhound races on Tuesday night. She took her binoculars. And... Let's see, Gail doesn't wear her glasses while painting? I think that's what we need. No, that's not it. No. I'm missing something. Apparently not. Let's see, Gail is at the Greyhound races. Moves her glasses when she uses uh haircut, maybe? Because that's on Tuesday as well. Actually, wait, no. Oh, there's a hole in her pocket as well. There we go. That was the other thing we need there. I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. There's a big hole in her pocket, but Gail didn't even know her pants had pockets. So it's uh, unlikely that she would keep her glasses in them. True, true, you got me there. Hey, Pizza, welcome in. How are you doing? Hope you are doing well. Hang on. I think I, think I might have been on the wrong trail here. Gail was at the races last night. She had to remove her glasses to use the binoculars. Gail also had her hair cut recently. It's fluffy and big and could easily hide a small object. I like how she just wrote, I could be eating cupcakes in the corner. Solving a complex mystery like the case of the missing glasses was tough work. But now came the most satisfying part. Delivering the dramatic denouement. All right, how are we going to uh, show off here? How are we going to show about as a detective or as a mystery writer? I mean, she is trying to be a detective, so I imagine that's probably what she'd want more. But uh, we can go the mystery writer uh, route if you'd like. We got one for mystery and we got one for detect. What else are you thinking, Chad? How do you want to go here? Two for detective, three for detective. Four, five, all right, we're staying on brand. We're staying on brand there. Let's review the facts. One, not only do you love your binoculars, you've come to depend on them for bird watching, greyhound watching, basically anything far away watching. That's true. I immediately sense that the two optical devices, your binoculars and glasses, were incompatible. Thus, to use one, you had to remove the other. Fascinating. Fact two. Yesterday, you changed your hairstyle. I did. Though fun, it was also impractical. And so tall that it could easily conceal a small object. I see where this is going. Please, don't interrupt. <laughs> After much research, deliberation, and debate, I've concluded there is only one place the missing glasses could be. They've been on your head the whole time. Dun-dun-dun! Oh, so they are. <laughs> right there on 
top of my head. Incredible! What a talent! They're always in the last place you look, aren't they? A master detective in the making! What would we have done without you? <clears throat> Gail, don't forget to pay the girl! Oh, of course, silly me! You must be rewarded generously for all your hard work. Now don't spend it all in one place! <laughs> Thanks. I'll do my best. Did you not have a fee listed there? Did you not know what she was going to be paying you? Were you just hoping she'd give you something good? I'm curious there. Grush and Grab, welcome in. Are you Pendulet? Possibly related to him. Through illicit means, the DNA tests are still out. How are you doing today, Grush and Grab? Welcome in. <laughs> yeah, of course they're in the last place to look, because then you stop looking. Absolutely. They were on her head the whole time. Too easy. Too easy. <laughs> All right. Well, let's head back then. I guess we have solved the mystery, so we got to go back and talk to Keith now, I believe. He was getting off his shift in about 15 minutes, so... Uh, hopefully, now that we've solved the, the crime... Uh, he should be all done. We can chat with him now. The best that Shane can get, or the best I can aspire to, perhaps. Are you ready, Keith? Wow, what an amazing detective. Glasses on her head. Hmm, who could have guessed? Oh, you heard. Whatever would we do without Master Investigator Jenny LeClue? I thought it was pretty cool, Jenny. And a whole nickel! You must be so excited. Yeah, that's more than her mom makes in a month. Wow! <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's all just... Hey, Jenny, my grandma called. She wants her sweater back. <laughs> oh, how wonderful it was to joke around with friends. I've had enough of this. Oh, no. Are we about to, are we about to destroy some children? I kind of feel like we might be. <laughs> You Christensen, welcome in. How are you doing today? All right. Let's ruin some lives. Hmm. Oh man, um, how do we want to deal with this chat? Do we go mean or do we go really mean? How scorched do we want this earth to be? I should have known Chet wants us to be really, really mean. <laughs> Alright! Alright, roast her until she burns! Alright, let's do this. We're going nuclear, we're going scorched earth, let's do this. Skirt ironed but unevenly. The work of a distracted housewife. Brand new, hideously overpriced shoes. Overcompensating father. Your dad's sleeping with Deborah's mom again, isn't he? What? No! How do you. Shut up, Jenny! You don't know anything! Wow, Jenny. That was cruel. <laughs> Who even says something like that? Aw, don't cry, Veronica. She's just a weirdo nobody! Jenny, la who? And. and the case of the missing. friends! <laughs> uh, yeah. Good one, Veronica. Come on, let's get you home. Jesus Christ! Are you coming, Susie? Thanks for the coffee, Keith. And the extra sugar. Of course. It's nothing special at all, and the same thing he does for everyone. Oh, okay. See you around, Keith. Wow! Well, that went well. Shall we? Uh, yeah. I've got no customers now, anyway. Chitty, for fuck's sake! <laughs> yeah, why is she being so mean to Susie? Nothing exciting ever happens here. Competition, maybe? I'm so tired of these simple cases. What do you think? Are we frustrated or are we outright angry? It's a subtle distinction, but it's an important one. How are you feeling, Chit? Scantron? Yeah, that was... 
That was a lot more violent than I was expecting there. Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god. Frustration sounds right. I'm thinking, yeah. Frustration. Let's go for it. How am I supposed to become a real detective if there are no real crimes to solve? You up that old lady? <clears throat> Darn. Thanks, Keith. But it was stupid, and everyone knew it. Including your girlfriend. She's not my- And you really mustn't let them treat you like that. You should stick up for yourself. Uh-huh. They don't mean anything. Sometimes you just gotta speak up and say how you feel. Well, I- You can't just let people walk all over you, Keith. Okay. Uh, Jenny. What do you think? Do we go for a careful judgment or reckless abandon? I think... I think I know what Jenny would do here. She doesn't seem like the careful type, but what, how are you thinking, Chet? Rin says she's being mean to Susie because Susie has a crush on Keith and so does Jenny. Shane has obviously never been a 10-year-old girl. You don't know me, Rin. You don't know where I've been, the life I have lived, the roads I have walked down in my time. <laughs> Johnny Boyish, how are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. Casita, good to see you as well. <laughs> Let's see, how, how do we got here? So I see two for Reckless. <laughs> Three for Reckless. Oh my god. Yeah, let's, let's go Reckless Abandon. Full steam ahead! It doesn't matter anyway. Nothing's gonna change. Not in this ghost town. <clears throat> it's not so bad. Don't you ever wonder what it would be like to live somewhere else? Oh, um, not really. Who am I kidding? There is nowhere else. Not for miles. What do you think? Does Jenny still hold out a forlorn hope? Or is she just totally full-blown pessimistic at this point? What is going on in the head and heart of Jenny LeClue? We're figuring this out together, Chet. Kosaki, you think she's still got some hope? I would like to think, although she's just... She seems really sad. She does. <laughs> Let's see, I see three forlorn hope, one pessimist. There should be at least some hope. I'd like, I'd like to think so. Five forlorn hope, two pessimists. All right, let's go forlorn hope then. Can I skip? <clears throat> oh, shucks. I see practice is going well. Is your dad still pressuring you to play? Well... Come on, Keith. You hate basketball. And tough love, but you're the worst player on the team. <laughs> Not the worst. Well, on the bench, anyway. Why don't you just tell him you don't want to play anymore? It's... a strawberry tradition. That's my point, Keith. This whole town is dead, stuck in the past. Everyone is just doing what they're told without questioning why. Where's the ambition, the sense of adventure? Are we still talking about basketball? <laughs> what do you think? Should we should we go for the tried and tested rock throwing technique? Or do we attempt a trick shot? How ambitious are we feeling, Chad? Do we think we can make the trick shot? I think that skip was a good sign. If she can pull off that triple skip, we might be able to do something here. Oh yeah, I see we're, we want to go for some trick shots here. All right, let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Limber up, limber up. Let's go for it. <laughs> ah. How's your mom? <clears throat> she seems distracted. Normally, she's so focused on her job. I mean, it's understandable. It's been almost a year since. And now she's planning to go away for the weekend, and she still won't tell me why. Yeah? She was definitely acting weird earlier. Maybe she's... lonely? You know what? You're right. I am? She shouldn't be alone right now. Actually, your dad told me they were meeting in the library. We're going to need supplies. Jenny. Two of Mr. Bean's finest, please. To go, of course. Here is my payment in full. That's a nickel. Put the rest on my tab? Thanks for the pep talk, Keith. 
You always know what to say to make me feel better. Last stone. You want it? Ooh, should we take a crack at this last stone, or do we let Keith do it? Keith doesn't seem very good at it, but... We've been very mean to him, so we might want to let him do it. <laughs> hey, Tom! Welcome in! How are you doing today, Tom? Hope the weekend is going well for you. And also, I saw you were uh, doing a uh, uh, stream for Games Not Cancer. I didn't manage to stop by, but that's very cool of you. I appreciate you doing that. Very awesome. Hope that went well for you. Yeah, let's give Keith a shot. I agree with you, Chet. Let's give Keith a shot here. You take it. You need to practice. Here goes nothing. Go for it, Keith. <clears throat> hey, big bunny. Three-pointer. Nice one, Keith. Maybe your luck's finally changing. Keith was an excellent listener. Or maybe he just didn't speak much. Either way, Jenny really enjoyed their little talks. He was the only person who really seemed to understand her. Jenny biked briskly towards the library back on campus to surprise her mother. Nothing exciting ever happens here, she grumbled, unaware of the great adventure that lay in store just around the corner. This is going places? I don't know what places they're going to, but I'm here for it. I am 100% here for it. Uh, so real quick, couple of matters we need to take care of. First of all, if you're not following uh, Retrograde Tom, you're going to want to make sure to. Uh, he is a fantastic streamer, plays a lot of cool retro games, plays some interesting modern games as well, has a very cool community, and is one of my favorite streamers on the site. So make sure if you haven't already, click that link, give him a follow, check him out next time he's live. And we have another fantastic streamer in here I want to make sure you know about as well. Can I get a shout out for other Rin? If we have any mods around, I would appreciate that very much. I see, this is an interesting game so far. They're, they're going in some directions that I don't necessarily understand, and I'm here for it. I am 100% here for it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is this is just so weird. Oh, Tom, you're having trouble finishing uh, uh, Outer Wilds? I was kind of worried that I'd have trouble sealing the deal as well. You chose pessimism. You did, Rin. But you got overruled, unfortunately. <laughs> Chat voted you were overruled. You're going to have to do it. But please talk about Games Not Cancer. I will, but you're going to have to give yourself a shout out at the end of it. Uh, so yeah, if anybody has uh, some spare time and maybe a few bucks you might want to throw around this weekend, uh, there is a cool charity marathon going on on uh, GOG's Twitch channel called Games Not Cancer. Um, they are raising money for a uh, uh, cancer foundation in Quebec, which is very cool, in honor of a fellow retro streamer named Dialad who passed away last year, which is just a fantastic cause, and it's really cool to see uh, people... A lot of cool people, a lot of, a lot of people I respect raising money for it, so I appreciate that. Uh, so hey, if you get some time, like I said, if you have some spare change you might want to throw around, feel free to stop in, or if you just want to keep some streamers who are working hard at it company, stop in as well. I know they'd appreciate that. Uh, it's going to be going at the GOG Twitch channel all weekend. Uh, so yeah, definitely poke your head in if you can. And now, you know, I, I think I can do a little leg work myself. I'll go ahead and do the, uh, go ahead and do the shot on myself. Can't be overridden that way. <laughs> so, hey, if anyone here is also looking for some other streamers to watch, because who isn't? Uh, other Rin here is not just a mod extraordinaire. She is a fantastic streamer in her own right. She plays a lot of cool indies will expose you to a lot of interesting games you might not have seen before. She's been playing Wildermyth recently, which is a hell of an interesting game and just a, a whole roller coaster ride. Really cool to see there. And aside from that, she's planning on doing some cool things in the future. I have heard, including some Lego building streams, which is very unique. I like the idea of that. So if you haven't already, click that link, give her a follow, check her out next time she's live. You'll probably see me over there too. I enjoy hanging out there as well. All right. Let us continue, then. Alright, so this is probably a bad idea. 
The library was quiet. Aren't most libraries? I, I forget they usually are. Too quiet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got something ominous going on. What's happening here? What's happening? Oop. There we go. Maybe? There we go. I think this might be where things start happening. Do a gallery art. There we go. Can we not? Gerald Strasbury. Cornelius Strasbury. It's a wall of Strasburys. The Strasbury lineage stretched back to the very founding of the university. There had been a Dean Strasbury at Gumboldt for over 150 years. There won't be for much longer. The Dean's retiring, and the only Strasbury left is Keith. And he's not exactly the academic type. She's so mean. <laughs> I love that you have to read what's going on in the library in the library. I do like that as well. No one on duty. A book thief's paradise. There's a note on the desk. <laughs> Memo. This man is not allowed in the library due to past incidents. He may be wearing a hat and or fake mustache. Be vigilant. Somebody keeps leaving book carts in the quiet study area. Please remember to return carts to the front desk area and stop standing on them. We've got ladders for a reason. That's super dangerous. Also, we got another sticker right there. Go ahead and grab that. From Dean Strausberry himself, I see. Now, let's see. All right, nothing else to do here then. Just being honest, it's true, but... Oh, shoot. That was weird. Well, we have been hearing about Hello? power fluctuations. Mom? Mr. Strasbury? Anybody? Jenny's words echoed through the library. Something's not right here. A mystery was unfolding. Whatever it is, I'll get to the bottom of it. The case of the quiet library. Too quiet. Can we just talk about how good that echo was? That is fantastic audio design right there. And it makes me very happy. Really good audio design. I appreciate that. Right, something over here? Sounds like it. What is it? What am I supposed to be seeing over here? Him? Him, what do you got for me? Oh. Aha! Les Strasbury, Gumboldt's 21st and jolliest dean, smiled down at Jenny. Looking a bit wonky today, Mr. Strasbury. A pair of wires ran down the wall and disappeared behind the painting. It's too high to reach. What are you hiding back there? That is a little suspicious. Well, we were told not to stand on the carts, but I think we're going to stand on the carts. <laughs> the chandeliers that adorn this library are made from rare Arthurtonian quartz, kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. The Glatz family was one of the oldest in town. They were the first to mine the valuable quartz deposits beneath Arthurton, and as such, they became incomparably wealthy. And they sure like to let everyone know it. Rich folks, what you gonna do? <laughs> All right, what else we got to see in here? Uh, so they mentioned the carts being in the quiet study area, so that's probably what we have to do, is we have to actually get to the quiet study area and then see if we can get a cart in there. So how do we get to the quiet study area? It looks like it's blocked off. Laddertron 5000. The pinnacle of remote ladder and bookcase technology. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Hey, Jimmy. Welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope all is well with you. And Eric, director. Glad to have you with us today. How's everything going with you? Oh, jeez. Whoa! Dangerous! 
The newly installed ladder system was prone to malfunction. Should have kept the old wooden ladders. They never tried to electrocute me. I need to find a way to turn the power off. Oh, it's going good, Eric. How about yourself? How are you doing today? Hope all is well. Ooh, excellent, Jimmy. Hope you have a good time at Renfest. That's always a good time. Jenny gazed at the technological marvel of Laddertron 5000. Seems pointless. It's not hard to move a ladder. Sometimes it feels like some unknown force is just trying to slow me down. I'm kind of getting that, yeah. Um, what are all these? It doesn't seem to do anything. No good. I don't think I'll be able to move the ladders while the electricity is on. Alright, so we have to turn the electricity off somehow. So let's let's do that first, right? Or no, we can't actually exit from here, can we? If there is a way to exit, I don't see it. No, that doesn't work. Oh, here we go! Ooh. Interesting. Alright, we found something here. I think I see what we're doing. I think I see what we're doing. And there we go. Hey, Turret Hark, welcome Jenny in. Jenny was notorious for climbing book carts. It's the only way to reach the highest shelves. In fact, this could be useful. But something else had caught her eye. This table's a complete mess. Who would leave it like this? Interesting. How are you doing today, Taratar? Hope everything is going well. Does this game have death screens? I hope not. Oh, jeez. I don't, I don't need to see your adventure in my life. Eligible scribbles, intricate diagrams of giant machines, a worn copy of Aliens in Arthurton. Jenny knew only one person could have been sitting here. CJ. <sighs> it's odd, though. He usually hides everything when he's finished. What's this? A tattered piece of paper with a series of seemingly unrelated notes. Hmm. The Shadow Men. Abandoned mines. Observed massive seismic activity. Possible landing site? 2300 forest. UFO, UFO swarm circling. Intense sound. Graveyard 310. Taken? Powerful beams of light. Experimenting on corpses? Got another sticker right there, too. He wrote SJ at the bottom and crossed it out? That's weird. What else have we got here? Go ahead and highlight what looks important, I suppose. UFOs, shadow men, experiments on corpses. It seemed that CJ was unraveling a mystery of his own. Wait, there's something on the other side. Wow, a color map of Arthurton. Jenny had never seen a town map with this level of detail before. I can't believe CJ left this behind. That's so unlike him. He'd be terrified if anyone else found it. I'll keep it safe until I see him again. Alright, we can do that. Anything to notice on here? Doesn't look like it. Alright. Let's see, librarian here. Fully stocked shelves like that would weigh a ton. Oh yeah, th that cart would be very difficult to move. <laughs> Oh, very cool, Turretark. I've played around with that a little myself, but haven't really got anywhere. 
Yes! Oh my god, quest for glory. It was trivial to murder yourself. It's hilarious. Alright, we officially got a map. Nice. We're still working on the mystery of the quiet library. Our current sta status is mastermind. Determined, strategic, and ruthless, you love it when a plan comes together. You're full of confidence, but can also be stubborn and impatient. That, that's true, yeah. I, I respect this. Alright, so... She can push the book cart, no problem. Bizarrely, it doesn't, the sound it makes makes it sound like it's not that heavy either. Go figure. They look like hardbacks too. Alright, there we go. Climb up there. No secrets between friends, Mr. Strasbury. Jenny stood on her tiptoes and delicately removed the priceless painting from the wall. Jenny! Oops. Aha! Precisely what I was hoping to find. It was? Let's see. Lights, bookcases, ladders. I'll cut the power and continue my investigation. But Jenny knew better than to play with electricity, so she left it alone. Ooh, do we turn off the breaker or do we find another way? I mean, it is right there. I don't know, what do you think, Chet? Rin says turn it off? Like, it, it's right there. I don't know why we wouldn't just turn it off. It doesn't look that dangerous. I mean, I know she's just a kid, but it's, it's just a switch. Taurus Hark says turn it off. It, it's, it's right there. I mean, why, why would we not? Let's just turn it off. Let's just, let's just turn it off. It's a simple switch. Perfectly safe. Oh, God. The eerie silence unnerved our tiny hero. But even worse was the dark. Jenny had always been terrified of the dark. Just breathe. A great detective never succumbs to fear. <sighs> okay. Looks like that did the trick. All right. Let's get over there. <laughs> Hello, darkness, our old friend. We'd like you to leave. You've overstayed your welcome. <laughs> I mean, that was supposed to be the switch for the ladders. It wasn't supposed to turn off all the lights. I understand some of the uh, confusion. All right. Also, safety tip. Jenny stopped in her tracks. The sign clearly read, wet floor, caution. Her path was blocked. You're kidding me, right? <laughs> Trampling muddy feet over a perfectly clean floor? She was a maverick, not a monster. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Th thank you, game, for giving me an excuse for not going that way. <laughs> All right. She is already standing in it, this is true. But yeah, just so I was saying, don't... Don't actually walk in water just because you can't see sparks. It could still kill you. Absolutely could kill you. Alright, is there something else here? Is that it? Oh, no, there is something else here. What was it? There we go. I don't know what that is. There's something else. That everything to see. That looks like it. Uh, oh, I bet we gotta get around to that. Is what we gotta do. Um, how do we how do we move from here though? Doesn't look like we can go up any higher on this ladder. Uh, do we need to try the controls now? What are we doing here? Running riot. Whoa! 
Hey, official conduit! Thank you for the hundred bits right there. Got paid for that recording gig the other day, sharing some of the love with one of my favorite streaming homies. Oh, thank you so much, conduit. I really appreciate that. Very kind of you. And congrats on uh, getting paid for a recording gig. That is awesome. Let's see if we can move this ladder then. And, oh, I see a hole over here. That's probably what we're trying to do. Go up there. There we go. I love the running riot. See, I was trying to think of something retro to do for my sound effects, and I was thinking, you know, when I was in college, like, every time I'd be walking around uh, the dorm, like, that's what I'd be hearing, just going down the, uh, going down the hallway, gain the lead, lost the lead, gain the lead, lost the lead. So I'm like, that'll work. We can do that. <laughs> hey, abstractism, it is all going good for me. How about yourself? How are things going for you today, abstractism? Hope all is well. I don't see anything else there, but we do have somewhere else we can push this ladder, so let's do that. <laughs> You've been there as well? Awesome, awesome. Those were good days. I miss those days. What the hell? The fallen remains of a bookcase blocked Jenny's path. It looks like a bomb went off in here. It's too precarious to climb over. All right, no getting that way, I suppose. Interesting. How do we get down there, then? I don't have any way to get the ladder up here. Well, let's just go in the office. Or let's see what the plaque is right here for right now. Master Chief multiplayer call. It's burned into my head. It's just, just part of the experience right there. It really is. Rare books. Our most precious collections reside in this temperature-controlled room. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> it's locked. No problem, I'll just pick it. Jenny was skilled with a lockpick, having watched her mother demonstrate the process countless times. But that was just for fun at home. This was the real world. You couldn't just go around picking other people's locks. That was a crime. A great detective knows when to bend the rules. And the paperclip she has in her pocket. Ooh, all right. Ooh. Mom Pick. always says, lock picking is a subtle art. Move slowly and search for the sweet spot. All right, I like this. All right, what do we what do we do there? Oh, that's fun! I like that. That's kind of cute. Oh, there we go. That's two. Making progress. Oh, what was that one? Oh, a little bit farther. There we go. Bingo. Piracy, I love that. It must have been a rush of blood that caused Jenny to act so irrationally. Regardless, she had picked the lock and felt strangely exhilarated. What treasures lay behind the door? Oh, it's oh. empty. Still, that book car could be useful. Dang it! <laughs> Suddenly Skyrim, Skyrim had a pretty decent uh, lock picking game. I believe. Alright, so what do we do with the cart then? You use it to climb over this? Oh, possibly. Baha! Something's blocking the ladder. Shoot. The heck is blocking the ladder, though? There's something stuck in the track. Imsa, scientia, potestas, est. It's the Dean's ring. No wonder the ladders were malfunctioning. The ring must have caused a short circuit. 
What's this ring doing in the track on the top floor of the library? We know it's important to him. How do we get up there? Oh, jeez, abstractism. I'm sorry. I hope you're able to take some uh, easy time today, at least. I had to say something. It's a good story, official conduit. I appreciate that. I'll keep hold of this and return it to the Dean when I see him next. Whoa, Jenny! Whoa! An empty library, a fallen bookcase, and now a broken balcony? This mystery has all the hallmarks of foul play. Yeah, what in the heck happened here? They say words can't hurt you. In this case, I'd be inclined to disagree. Daddy. Solid iron and oak, torn apart like a piece of bread. It would have taken some serious force to do this. Something bad happened here. This is feeling more and more like a crime scene. Yes. And then Jenny saw it. Ooh. Covered in a ripped curtain and surrounded by broken glass. It is a crime scene. All right. Looks like we're going to get to investigate a murder like Jenny always wanted to. Shit went down at the library. And now it's our job to figure out what the hell. Let's get down there and figure it out. Ooh. Another piece of the uh, postcard right there. I'll take that. Did we turn into Mirror's Edge? I mean, kinda. We're uh, currently working our way through this broken library and there might have been a crime here. Oh boy, murder detectives, man. Detectives. Can't take them anywhere. Some more gallery art. Cool, cool. Alright, let's see what kind of crime we gotta be solving here. You never forget the first time you see a dead body. It harrows the mind, terrifies the soul, scars you to your very core. A dead body? No way. This is amazing! Jenny! Who lay under that curtain? Who had breathed their last breath? Who had shuffled off this mortal coil to meet their maker? It could be anyone. I mean, it could be an escaped lunatic from the asylum. Or an axe-wielding maniac on the run from the cops. It could be... It could be... Mom? Oh no, please no. No, you never forget the first time you see a dead body. Jenny knew it was wrong to disturb the crime scene. But I have to know who's under here. Slowly, she drew back the heavy cloth. Please don't be my mom. Please don't be my mom. Wow, oh, jeez! Dean Strausberry! Thank God. Uh, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Poor Mr. Strausberry. What happened to you? Was this a terrible accident? Or worse? Murder! Her stomach churned. Seeing the Dean's lifeless face, his contorted frame, Jenny felt the urge to run to get as far away from this horrific sight as possible. I just... Jenny had longed for an adventure, for a real case to solve. I... didn't expect it to be like this. She gathered herself, took a deep breath, and began to search for clues. Alright, jeez. The Vazeril shit went down a few floors, or should I say a few stories? Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it was the Dean. It was the Dean. We knew that the Dean and her mom were in the library, so it had to be one of those two. I'm wondering what the purple is there. Lone Grin, welcome in. How are you doing today? Oh, yeah, Keith. He's, he's going to be in bad shape. Oh, jeez. All right, I saw a bunch of stickers. So the first thing we do when we find our friend dead is we, of course, grab a bunch of stickers. So let's do that. 
<laughs> Let's lighten up the mood by uh, grabbing some stickers. You know, chilling out, collecting some stickers. It's all good. Nice chill sticker times. Yeah. You're always having fun when you got stickers. Everybody loves stickers. Oh, and I think that's all the ones I saw. <laughs> Double tap the corpse just to be safe. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Alright, check out the purple thing first, because I have... I have questions. He looks like he's been dead for weeks. His skin is pale and colorless. And there's a strange mark on his neck. How does... How does he look so decomposed? That's very strange. Something in his hand. The Dean's hand was clapped shut around a small object. That's strange. Rigor mortis usually takes hours to set in. How is everything advancing so quickly here? I'm sorry for what I'm about to do, Mr. Strasbury, but this could be a vital clue. Oh no. Oh god! Oh god! Oh jeez! Mom's ID card? But that means... Julie LeClue had definitely been here. She could be the last person to have seen him alive. She could be the killer. Impossible. My mother's a forensic expert. She'd never leave such incriminating evidence behind. But even the smartest criminals made mistakes. Jenny couldn't deny this looked bad for her mom. If anyone else sees this, they'll jump to conclusions. They'll think my mom's a murderer. Unless... A peculiar thought crossed Jenny's mind. Oh, jeez. Unless there's nothing to find. Removing evidence from a crime scene was highly unethical. So was planting evidence to frame an innocent person. She had no proof of that. I have to do something. Oh, God, this is a big one. A lot of the choices we've done in the game so far, I think, were inconsequential. This one's a big one. Shit! Do we leave the evidence as it was, or do we taint the crime scene and take the evidence and possibly destroy the evidence? What are you thinking? What are you thinking here? Oh god, Rin! Hey, Emperor, welcome in! How are you doing today, Emperor? Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Burn the library! Oh, we're not doing that. Alright, I see one leave it. I see two leave it. I see two leave it, one take it. A ten-year-old wonder kind would absolutely tamper with the evidence. That's true, that's another, uh, that's so, what is it? Two take it, two leave it, I think? There's three leave it. Three take it, we're neck and neck here, folks. That's another leave it, that's another take it, we're still neck and neck. <laughs> Emperor Nano, you're not helping. That's another take it, another leave it, we are still in a dead heat. There's one more for leave it. Ooh. Flip a coin, then take it. <laughs> We're even again. We need a tie break here. You can pull. Yeah, let's do a pull. Let's do a pull. This one's important. This one, I feel like this could be a, a fulcrum that some of the game turns on. I could be wrong, but this feels real significant. Uh, so yeah, if you want to do a poll, let's, let's do it that way. Impolite, perhaps? <laughs> also, enemy existence, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you are having a fantastic weekend. <laughs> Alright, and while we're waiting, uh, John, I see, has invested in a Harvester sequel. And you know what we'd be doing if we did a Harvester sequel? That's right, destroying evidence constantly. Because uh, there's no ethics in Harvester. There's no morality in Harvester. None whatsoever. Only murder and meat. So, uh, yeah, we can, we can do that. We could uh, definitely put that together in uh, Harvester sequel. Good thinking, John. I like the way you're thinking. Let's do that. Harvester 2, take that. <laughs> All right, the poll is up, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and vote. What do we do here? Do we leave the evidence or do we take the evidence? Place your votes now. And I will do what you guys want me to do. Whichever you want, we will go in that direction. It's up to you. I'm leaving it in your hands. 
And uh, I'm actually interested to see which way we go. Don't forget to leave fingerprints everywhere. Oh, that's dangerous. That is dangerous. Kiss, welcome back. Hope you are doing good today. Oh my goodness. This is, like I said, I, I don't know if this is an important choice. It might not be, but it feels important. It feels really important. Yeah, so it's basically, do we leave the crime scene the way we found it, or do we take evidence from the crime scene and perhaps destroy it? Because what we're worried about, for anyone who's joined us, we found a piece of evidence that makes our mom look suspicious at the scene of a murder. So we're, we're wondering if maybe we should take the evidence to make sure our mom isn't implicated, or do the ethical thing and leave it exactly where it is. And I'll leave the choice up to you. The evidence is our mom's ID card it's the, with a broken string, too. So presumably, she would have had it coming into the library and then left without it. And it was in the hand of the victim, the, the clenched fist of the victim. So it does look bad for her mom. This is it's a bad look. It's a bad look, most definitely. The kiss never take the evidence. That would be the ethical thing. I agree. I agree. You already messed up the crime scene when you took those stickers? Non-canon stickers, I hope. Probably. I mean, there's a difference between- Oh, no. Yo! <laughs> Shit! Why? Ah, 13, 13 tie. At the end, of course. Of course we leave it a perfect tie. See, Chet, you think you've trolled. You think you've trolled here, but you, you didn't. You did not troll me here. Do you know why you didn't? Because I'm a giant boy scout. And I say leave the evidence because that's the ethical thing to do. You fools. You played yourself. Played right into my hands. <laughs> I gave you the choice to be, uh, to, to break the rules, to be unethical. And no, you left it to me. And this is what you get. <laughs> We're leaving the evidence. My mom would kill me if she thought I tampered with evidence. Besides, she's innocent. Exactly. The truth will come out. It's fine. Let's see, that is every time you put up a poll on Twitter. Yeah, people like tying those polls. I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> All right, let's keep looking around. Let's find some more evidence here. Let's see what else is happening. Um, Something underneath him here. The Hawk and the Weasel and other bedtime stories. It could be important. Then again, it could have just joined the Dean for the ride. True. Hard to tell. Yeah, nothing really to see there. Now what else do we got going on? We got his button right there. We've seen that before. Anything else on his person here? There's another book back here. It's a book about predicting the future. I suppose it didn't belong to Mr. Strasbury then. Probably not. Hey, Trinetta! Welcome in, Trinetta! How are you doing today? How is your weekend going? And if we have any mods around, can I get a shout-out for Trinetta LaRue? I would appreciate that. Stupid ethics, where's the fun in that? Boy Scout style. I gotta do what I gotta do. Don't worry about it as the character's mother is taking the jail. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's okay. We can trauma bond more with Keith when our mom is on trial for killing his dad. The drama. <laughs> yeah, it's Six Cents by Clairvoyant. That's a good little pun right there. I like it. I like it. So far, it's been okay. Good deal. Hey, if anybody in here isn't following Trinetta LaRue, you should. Do you like Final Fantasy? She's trying to 100% all of them. Yes, you heard right. 100% all of the Final Fantasies. Also recently, been playing uh, through some Metal Gear for the very first time, which is very cool. If any of that sounds exciting, I hope it does. Make sure and click that link, give her a follow, check her out next time she's live, have some fun over there. I am doing very good, Trinetta. It's been a nice relaxing weekend, although uh, I still need to dig my car out of the snow at some point, and I have been avoiding that, and there's only so long I can do that, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, they really foreshadowed hard. Oh my god. You gotta dig out too? Oh god. I, I've got a couple days off right here, so I've been avoiding it, but... Oh, eventually I gotta go out there. Gotta go out there and dig out. It's smashed. Most likely from the fall. The hand stopped at 3.57pm. 
That gives me a potential time of death. True. If Jenny had arrived just a few minutes earlier... I might have been able to save him. But if that's the time of death, why is he in rigor mortis now? As she said, it takes hours to get into rigor mortis. But he only apparently died a few minutes ago. That's suspicious. Now, what do we got over here? Nothing? Anything? I think I might be just out of place for it. Yeah, there we go. Something under the curtain here. The Dean's planner lay open on today's date. Perhaps I can retrace his steps and create a timeline of events. All right, let's see what we get. Meet JL. Could that be mom? Where's Widow's Drop? I've never heard of it. Interesting. Looks like he completed all his chores for the day. I already knew the Dean was meeting mom here. So where is she now? That's interesting that he writes Julie there, but he writes JL up there. That could be two different people, because he writes the name in two different ways. Potentially, potentially. That is Mr. Straussberry. He's been found dead in the library. So uh, we're going to have to... We're trying to figure out if it was murder or an accident right now. We will see. It is actually suspicious, Vazarel. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Could have died 24 hours ago? He couldn't because we saw him this morning. So we saw him not 24 hours ago. So it's, it's, it's very weird. I'm not sure what to make of that. Looks like he canceled his meetings on Friday and rearranged lunch with Keith. Oh, poor Keith. Oh, yeah, we're gonna have to- Jenny didn't know how she would break the news to him. But I should be the one to tell him. Gossip spreads like wildfire in Arthurton. Now, see, we know his watch wasn't wrong either because when we saw him earlier, we commented that his watch was off and he wound it and corrected it then. So as of this morning, his watch was correct. We know that for a fact, which is actually good foreshadowing right there. I like that. Dementia, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you are doing well. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? He sure was working hard on that speech. I'm sad he won't get to deliver it. All right, so some interesting information there. Most likely. Oh, what else do we have? What else do we have around here? What else to see there? We've got two more clues we need to find here. Let's see what we got going on. I don't think there's anything else with a curtain there. Anything else way down here, perhaps? I don't think so. It seems a little bit too far away, but I'll check. Gotta be thorough, that's important. What like broken glass over there too, that's really uh, weird. Um, I don't see anything up there, but that actually goes higher than I thought it did. Nope, nothing up there whatsoever. Alright, what else are we missing? Is there another hidden clue we need to find? Is that what it is? Possibly? I already noticed the purple mark. That's pretty weird. Ah, his hand! There are bits of glass and metal debris everywhere. He has burn marks on his hand. Burn marks? Now, we do know that the uh, ladder was shorted out earlier. Does possibly suggest an accident? Potentially? Interesting. Yeah, we're not sure what the, the thing on his neck is, but that is, uh... That's suspicious. That is very suspicious right there. Alright, what else do we got? I don't think there's anything else to see on the body itself here. What else are we supposed to be seeing? What else do you want from us here, game? What else do we have to see? I feel like we've seen pretty much everything. Not sure what else is left. Um... Oh, there's one more book. There we go. I missed that. A book about chance. What are the odds this was an accident? Uh, odds. Uh. <laughs> I think that's all the evidence I'm going to find here. She took one last look at the Dean's lifeless body. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Strasbury. I promise I'll get to the bottom of this. Jenny knew she should leave and call the police. But how often did a case like this come along? Never. There's more to this than meets the eye. The case of the dead deed. The case of a lifetime. Some of this evidence must be connected. So she opened her journal to join the dots. What was the apparent cause of death? All right, we'll see what we can do here. Hey, Bob, welcome in. How are you doing today, Bob? Hope you're doing well. All I gotta do is rule out the impossible. That way, whatever remains, however improbably, is the truth. I like that. I like that. I'm not sure. That's a good thought, though, Kiss. Could something cause rigor mortis to set in early? That I have no idea. All right, so we've got the burn marks on his hand. Sure. We've got the ring that was in the uh, ladder rails. Up there, and we got the broken balcony. It looks like the Dean was thrown from the balcony when he reached down to pick up his ring, which was stuck in the electrified ladder track. He grabbed the curtain, but it didn't slow him down. He landed on a bed of metal and glass debris. Huh. So it was an accident. No murder here. What is unusual about the Dean's death? However, there is Mom's ID card. There is the purple marks and the shriveling on his skin. And the pocket watch, I think, also figures into that. Oh, there's only there's only two things we need to uh, hit here. Dean has a strange mark on his neck. All the skin around his face is gray and gaunt. I've never seen anything like it before. He's holding my mom's ID card, which makes her the prime suspect. But why would she or anyone want to kill Dean Strasbury? Good question, good question. Jenny suspected foul play, but what was the motive? Had she missed something? The watch! The Dean's watch stopped at 3.57 p.m. When I came into the library, the clock tower rang four times. The library only has one exit. And I haven't seen anyone but the Dean since I got here. Which meant if the Dean was murdered... The killer must still be here! Yes. Whoa! He's getting away! The chase is on! Also, Groshin, when we did take the card out of his hand, there was some crunchy noises there. So, you know. Th there, was, there was some grossness going on. That's just another gallery item. Uh, there's no way we're getting up there. Oh, wait. Oh, here we go. This seems dangerous. Especially since we just saw a, a torn curtain. If there's a way to run, I don't know how. <laughs> Jenny could hear police sirens in the distance. Someone must have tipped them off. I'll catch the murderer and keep him busy until the cops arrive. Chasing after murderers was hardly the job of a little girl. Hey, you! Stop! Well Despite surviving her fall without so much as a broken bone, Jenny couldn't help but feel she had failed. As the sirens grew louder, she knew it would only be a matter of time before the sheriff arrived, and then she'd have to explain why she hadn't called for help. But the worst feeling of all was that she had let the killer escape. As she drifted slowly into unconsciousness, Jenny heard a familiar voice, concerned, gentle, Soothing. Jenny? Oh, Jenny, what have you done? Mom? Freeze! You're under arrest! Dun dun dun! What have I done?
I killed him! Dame! This is all wrong. Murder in Arthurton? This is not an appropriate story for Jenny LeClou. Poor Dean Strousbury. What was I thinking? I've gone too far. Perhaps I should take a break. Come on, Rufus. Let's go for a walk. Clear our heads and work off some of this jam. You're just eating straight jam? That's gross. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> In before, that's not jam. It looked like jam. And he did have a lot of it. There were seeds in it, too, which makes it look like jam. Remember Jam Jar's six pipe cleaners brandy dog biscuits. CSI class, Jenny did, but not really. We already did that. Let's see. On her head, genius. Oh, that's the glasses. Ah, another sticker. When you move the glass. There we go. He does love him some brandy, apparently. Let's see what else we got here. Let's set the clackers going. Uh, Alright, we already read that before. See so yeah, how we're good there. Um, let's see, that was the thing that just happened in the story, so that's nothing new. Whoa! Well, that got heavy. <laughs> where, where are we? Hello? Oh! will set you free. I told you I was looking for mom. Why? We were going to great papers. When do I get to see her? Did you disturb the crime scene? Uh, um, what? Uh, if we, uh, I, I, well, well, um, uh, what do you think about this one, Chet? We did actually disturb the crime scene. I don't... I don't know if he'd believe us if we lied here. Rin, you do have a point. <laughs> yeah, we got a lawyer up. That is, that is probably the important thing. We don't get the option here today. We do not have the option. Oh, I... Mm. Truth just a little? I mean, maybe. Alright, let's, let's tell him the truth. I, he's probably going to figure it out anyway, honestly. He could have been injured. I was just trying to help. I want to speak to my mom. Whoa! Oh, shit! And suddenly they were playing Little Nightmares. What the fuck? You owe me a Coke, some guy in a hat. Oh, 
Hello? Anybody here? Well, <laughs> Warden, you were thinking the same thing. And yeah, Kiss, that is like a good way to represent how a child would feel being interrogated like that, so that does work out well. I'm liking this game a lot. Good puzzles, good writing, amazing art. Good music and audio design, too. Also, listen to Rin, she knows what she's talking about. Keith! Keith! Please, look at me! Keith, wait! No, come back, I'm so tiny! And now Silent Hill. I was not expecting this game to go into the places this game is going right now. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. Nothing else over there. Yeah, kids, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. No? That feels like something. Is there something over here? Yeah, I'm liking it. It's... Oh. Oh, I, I see what we're doing. I think I see what's happening here. the run button. It didn't help. Well. <gasps> what a horrible nightmare. Dean Strausbury was dead. My mom was in jail. Keith told me he never wanted to see me again. And worst of all, 
I was surrounded by an evil army of giant teddy bears. Unfortunately, it was all true, including the teddy bears. What? My eyes! There's something wrong with them! Everything's pink! But her eyes were fine. It was the room that was pink. Pink cuddly toys. Pink furniture. Pink clothes. And a hand-drawn homage to teenage heartthrob Pelvis Cressley. God damn it. Covered in pink hearts. Everything a teenage girl could dream of. It looks like a marshmallow exploded. It was at this point Jenny remembered where she was. I shouldn't be here. What happened? And what is that terrible music? I can't think straight with that racket playing. Yeah, These aren't my clothes. And where's my journal? That wasn't the only thing missing. The Dean's ring. It was in my pocket. Her hair paint's going too. Yeah, it's her attack. This got weird and heavy. Holy shit. Alright, let's look around and see if we can find anything in this room. Nothing over there. I was hoping there might be some secrets. Yeah, it seems like chill music. I don't have a problem with it. Jenny's uh, a little bit upset at the moment, though. I'll give her that. Hilarious kiss. You're the fan that I love. Ah yes, the eagerly awaited follow-up to the smash hit. Even though I'm a big star and you're just a fan, perhaps someday we could be together. Ugh, who buys this crap? Pelvis Cressley and the hip thrusters. There's a favorite right there. <laughs> all right, take care of yourself, all -alls. Thanks for hanging around as always. We'll see you around. Huh? Ooh. Hushed whispers in the hallway? I should investigate. Time to drop some eaves. Eaves, some drops. Droplets. Eaves drop. Probably. Let's see what we got over here. Doesn't seem to be any else, anything else to see in this room. It's locked from the outside. Who would trap a child in this nightmarish hellscape? Jenny peeped through the tiny keyhole. As her eyes adjusted to the light, she recognized the substantial frame of Winston the Clue, Arthurton's long-standing sheriff, and Jenny's... Granddad! Oh. Jenny's relationship with her grandfather was contentious, to say the least. He was a stern and humorless man who placed honor, tradition, and the law above all else. Sometimes even family. But what was he doing here? And who is he talking to? Florence and Richard Glatz were the wealthiest couple in town, and hugely influential. Their company, Glatz Mining and Supply Corps, was the oldest in Arthurton. While Richard may have been the head of the business, everyone knew that Florence wore the pants. Exceptionally charming and generous, she always had a smile on her face. Which is why I don't trust her one bit. Being careful not to make a sound, Jenny leaned in and listened. With everything going on, I don't have time to watch her. It's no trouble at all, really, Winston. She can stay for as long as she likes. The girls are great friends. I only hope she feels better soon. That was quite the scene she made at the funeral. She should have left the boy alone. Really, Winston. This whole situation must be unbearably traumatic for the poor girl. Her mother in jail, and what she saw in the library. One shudders at the thought. And all this barely a year after what happened to Henry. She'll be fine. Just keep an eye on her. She can be a real handful. Oh, don't worry. I've planned everything. Pony rides, afternoon tea, and tomorrow we're going dress shopping. Oh, that reminds me. I have something for you. Dress shopping? 
First they locked me up, now they want to torture me? I need to get out of here. Fast. But her curiosity was piqued. She had to know what Mrs. Glatz had gone to fetch, and so she waited. Let's take a look. Oh, we gotta find clues. Let me catch up on chat real quick. It does look like a big room, some guy in a hat, but don't uh, forget she's like 10, so it might just be for her perspective. Cider, I had a lot of time. Uh, I really enjoyed Good Life. I would recommend it if you're looking for something that's kind of like Stardew Valley, but a lot kookier. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's see. I love cats. I had heard about that one. When Thaladius T. Pumberbitten discovered the first quartz seam lining the Great Mountains, little did he know the impact it would have on the future of the town. Little did he know the Glatz family would muscle in and take over the whole operation. Nowadays it was hard to go anywhere in town without seeing something made from it. Let's see what else is there to see over here. I see some more gallery art, we'll grab that. While we're in the neighborhood. Nathaniel Glatz stared disapprovingly back at Jenny. Creepy old man. Actually, this was the man who saved Arthurton. When the quartz mines began to run dry, it was his research into the unique properties of the crystals that secured the future prosperity of the town and the company. Huh? Where did he go? Oh, God! Winston, what are you doing down there? Hmm. Thought I heard something. Really? A man of your age spying on teenage girls? I've told you already, she won't be going anywhere. It was probably just Jenny's imagination, but those words felt oddly... Sinister. Yeah. Here. Why does Mrs. Glatz have official police documents? What? Satisfied. How is Julie? She's in the safest place, behind bars. Surely they don't believe she's guilty. I don't envy you, Winston. It must be hard to stay impartial. Hmm. If the poor dear would just confess, it would make things much easier. I have everything under control. Of course you do, dear. No one doubts your loyalty to Arthurton. We must continue to look out for each other. Now more than ever. Sheriff, are you receiving? Go ahead. It's the Leclu house, sir. We found something. I'll be right there. Over. It sounds like you've got important things to take care of. Yes. Well, good night, Florence. Good night, Winston. Don't let her out of your sight. She is a Leclu, after all. I'm sure we'll manage. Jenny couldn't believe what she'd just heard. Everyone thinks my mom's a murderer. Thankfully, her mother's fate was in safe hands. The fine people of the Arthurton Police Department. Oh God, she's gonna rot in jail. Jenny could leave the case to them and enjoy a fun week of pony rides and shopping sprees. No. No? Mom always says a great detective leaves nothing to chance. I have to do something. But she was just a kid. What could she possibly do? This is my chance. The case of a lifetime. My mom needs me, and I won't let her down. I'm gonna find my stuff and get out of here. And just like that, a great adventure began. All right, excellent. And yeah, I gotta remember, I might want to get a hold of Libertalia myself now that they're reprinting it. I never, I never got it before. I would like to have a copy of that. I played it before, which was good. Glatz sounds kind of similar to Glanz, which is Glisten in German. I was kind of wondering if it was maybe supposed to sound like glass, because it is quartz, which is kind of a crystal. It could be either of them, honestly. Uh, let's go ahead and catch up here. Rich people possibly being evil? No. 
No way. <laughs> All right, let's see what we get. I love you. I love you. Ah! You are my best friend. You scared the life out of me, pig. That base home was terrifying. Holy shit. The sun was setting behind the great mountains of Arthurton, cradling the town in a warm red embrace. I slept the whole day away? I have to get out of here and make up for lost time. Trauma, Jenny. Trauma will do that. We got something hidden around here. But hidden where? Oh. All the dangly bits are swaying. Strange. It's not windy in here. That is odd. Best in show, horse ballet. First prize, advanced table etiquette. There's one here for best smile. Seriously? That's kind of creepy. A heart-shaped mirror for the lady who loves herself. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, screw in the rest of the lights. May as well. Why are they unscrewed though? It's a little sus. Got the gallery art too. Hmm. That didn't do anything. May need to do something there later. Hmm. There's something strange about this mirror. This requires further investigation. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. I think we'll have to come back here later. I think we're probably missing a piece of that puzzle. Alright, take care of yourself, Jimmy. Thanks for hanging around. We will see you around. Uh, let's see. Is that the Crystalline Entity? No, it's a Star Trek Next Generation episode. One of my favorites, too. Seriously, who has windows this big? There. Below, Lake Nowhere stretched out as far as the eye could see. In the distance, Jenny could just make out the great lighthouse on Skull Island. It's foggy out there tonight. How do they make a nice, cozy, like, children's series and name something Skull Island? It seems a lot of place. Havoc at Heroes Memorial! What should have been a touching farewell to a beloved member of the community was tarnished by a poorly timed act of protest yesterday at Mother of Mercy, Mercy Church. An emotionally unstable child was witnessed shouting at members of the congregation, causing damage to property and even desecrating the corpse. After a long chase, the girl collapsed and was carried from the premises. Hundreds gathered to pay their respects to the late Leslie Strausberry, the long-standing and beloved Dean of Humboldt University, who was murdered in cold blood by a member of his own faculty. The community was devastated last Thursday when Mr. Strausberry was found dead in the school library after apparently being pushed from a third-story balcony. The murder was the first the town had seen in decades. Dean Strausberry is survived by his son, Heath Strausberry. After an anonymous tip, Sheriff Winston LeClue arrived first on the scene and found a woman covered in the Dean's blood. Evidence has linked her to the murder. Wait, who gave the anonymous tip? And when we saw her, she wasn't covered in blood. What's going on here? Uh, although a motive for the killing has not been established, the woman has been identified as Julie LeClue, professor of criminology and daughter-in-law to Sheriff Winston LeClue. She remains in custody at this time while police continue their investigation. What? I don't remember any of this. I bet that kid's in a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think she is. I suspect you were right. Pushed from the balcony? That's not what happened. And no mention of electrocution. Somebody's covering things up here. Mom wasn't covered in blood. That's a lie. Something's wrong here. Jenny thought of her poor mother, locked away in a jail cell for a crime she didn't commit. Don't worry, Mom. I'll prove you didn't do it. As soon as I get out of here. Either this is shoddy reporting, or someone is trying to cover up what really happened. 
My mom's still in jail, so the police must not think this was an accident. And if it wasn't an accident, then... The real killer is still out there! We gotta get back to it. Ah, same root word! That would make sense. There's always a Skull Island that does sound familiar, actually. <laughs> Pull on the thread and the sweater will unravel. That is what I've heard from Weezer. Uh, Sheriff Winston is Jenny's grand uh, grandpa and apparently the father-in-law of Jenny's father. So, grandfather-in-law? I don't know how that works. But yeah, not related by blood, it sounds like. And he didn't seem like... And Jenny mentioned that she didn't get along with him very well either. We don't know what the story is there, though. On the other side of the lake, beyond the forgotten forest, sat a more modest house. No fancy windows or crystal chandeliers, just a small wooden frame in need of painting. Home. Paternal grandfather, yeah. Now, I, I know something happened to Jenny's dad. I'm thinking he's dead, but nobody's actually said. So that could be what caused the, uh, the friction in the family there. I've never seen so many clothes. Maybe mine are in here somewhere. Well, my clothes definitely aren't here. They'd be easy to spot amongst all the sequins and ribbons. Yeah. All right. There's that record again. Oh! Oh! Can you see it, Chet? There's only four lights lit up on the record. All right. I think that's what we got to do as far as the light puzzle. Got something hidden over here, too. There are four lights. Oh, no sticker. There are four lights. Let's get back over there. Let's solve us a puzzle. There are five lights. No, Rex says no. All right, so. Ouch, that's hot. Oh, right. We got to turn off. Go. There we go. Oh no, that's wrong, is it? Maybe? Nothing happened. I thought I was on to something. Well, that's close. Oh, they're not in the same arrangement though, are they? That's the same numerically though. Let's try let's try just line them up instead of numerically, let's try try just get them symmetrical right there. I feel like I've seen that heart shape somewhere else in this room. Yeah, that's just the thing, right? Go take another look at it. Thought we had it that time. Yeah, the lights on there were symmetrical. That didn't seem to work out there. Um. Oh, it's three. Three empties on the left and two on the right. Gotcha. So I had it backwards. Yeah, this whole room is a bit, uh, not my vibe, I can tell you that much. Oh, absolutely amazing episode, uh, I agree. Right, so, That's oh. more fun than it should be. Stop that! Alright, so that... There we go, that should be it then. What? This family's disposable income is outrageous. Agreed. I always knew they were hiding something. I bet there are all kinds of horrific secrets lurking up there. Kiss, I'm a girl who likes pink and this is a little overdone. Too much of any good thing. 
is uh, is definitely ruins the effect, most definitely. Yeah, some guy in a hat that is very frustrating. What the what the fuck is this? Frankenstein. This does look like that, doesn't it? All right, let's. Let's see where this is going to take us, then. Going all the way up. Oh, it's just a dusty old attic. Just a dusty old attic? Or is it full of secrets? Dozens of old boxes covered in dust and cobwebs, filled with toys, school projects, and old trophies. Attics. Where dreams go to die. Yeah, kind of. This is true. Let's be thorough. Let's see what we can find here. Piece of gallery art, I'll take that. Climb up over these boxes. Let's see what's over here first. Let's see what else there, there is waiting for us in here. Before we start getting two nuts. Oh god! Oh, hello, spooky bear. Feels like he's watching me. It's a little creepy. It's a little bit creepy. Everything in here is covered in dust. Except this bear. And there's light coming from behind him. What? What are you hiding, spooky bear? Move evil looking bear. Alright, we'll get back to that in a second. <laughs> Swing light like it's on a ship, that is a little weird. Let's see what's. Oops. Aha! A way out of here! Huh. Locked. But where is the lock? Interesting. Anything else back here? No? Alright. So we've got a possible escape route. Oh god! I, I don't know if I want to hug the bear, but we are going to have to give him a shove. Okay, deep breath. Deep breath. Smothered by a giant teddy bear. What an end that would have been. <laughs> Just as I suspected, a hidden staircase. Alright, forward we go then. Where does this lead? The attic of the attic? The double attic? Double secret attic? Yeah, he got his hug. We didn't get a choice in the matter. He got his hug. Uh... Jenny was no stranger to the labs at Gumbold, but she'd never seen anything quite like this. Certainly not inside someone's house. What? Hey! What are you doing up here? Loved by all, kind to a fault, Jenny's cousin was also the most popular girl in town. Oh, uh, hi, Jenny. Er, uh, um, you... You should be in bed resting. What are you doing up here? I should ask you the same question. Oh jeez, Dragon Lady Myth, welcome in. I am having a lot of fun with this game. How are you doing, Dragon Lady Myth? Hope you're having a fantastic weekend so far. Let's see. Oh man, Captain Harlock, Gamma Gubo. 100% Captain Harlock. I love me some Captain Harlock. It's Raiden Bears! Hallelujah. <laughs> Alright, what do we want to ask about? Do we want to ask if, about the mysterious figure we saw in here? Who's obviously her? 
No, no, forget about it. We know it's her. Let's ask about the laboratory. What is this place? I need to know. I need to know. What is all this equipment? Why is there a secret elevator running from your room to the attic? Oh, you must need my collection of teddy bears. Chet, should I handle this diplomatically or should we just uh, skip ahead to the chase here? What do you think? Chet, I'm now reminded of the- oh my god. I haven't seen that video in a lifetime, Rin, but I know exactly the one you're thinking of. <laughs> I see too diplomatic. I see too cut to the chase. <laughs> I think, I think Chet's leaning towards cut to the chase here. We are a guest, we should be diplomatic. It's a close one, this one's a close one, but I think we're leaning towards cut to the chase. We are a ten-year-old girl. There's only so diplomatic we can be. This is true. <laughs> All right, let's 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 cut to the chase. We are a captive here against our will. That's true as well. Don't play dumb with me, Susan Glass. These bears are hiding nothing, and that one's wearing a welding helmet. Well, um, there's a simple explanation for that. There are just too many to fit in my bedroom. Okay, okay, do we... So, uh, we didn't, we didn't get necessarily anything out of that. Do we go good cop now, or do we go bad cop? What are you thinking? Should we give her the first degree, or do we do we go easy on her? Because I'm, I'm not sure she's going to respond well to, to hitting her hard. She might just clam up. She seems like she's panicking. I think it might be time to ease up a little bit. Quite possibly. Now, I like what you're thinking there. Lee to other Rin, I think you both got the idea. We'll we'll ease up a little bit. We'll go good cop, and we can press more harder later, if need be. Susie, clearly something's weighing heavily on your mind. Take a deep breath and answer the question honestly. I promise you'll feel better. It's not what you think. This is where I um er uh, teddy bears. I have vintage bears, new bears, rare collectible bears. Enough. Stop avoiding the question. All right, all right, we're, we're, we're making progress, but we still need to break through to her. Do we try and gain her trust now, or do we lay on the pressure thicker? We, we gotta be careful now. Gain her trust so she can be betrayed later. Honestly, she does seem like she's uh, the daughter of the enemy, if nothing else. So we might need her trust in order to escape from this nightmare. Shit, <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say that one. Yo, we'll get her trust. We'll get her trust for right now. You don't need to hide anything. You can be honest with me. I can't. You wouldn't understand. Try me. Susie's secret was the kind you took to the grave. A shameful, dark secret. A secret so shocking she feared she would lose everything. Her friends would abandon her. Her family would disown her. She'd never find true love. Oh, God! I'm going to die alone! Ugh. You can't tell anyone. You have to promise me. I'm thinking that's what it is, Rid. I'm, I'm kind of thinking that's where it's going. Should we promise her? Yeah, I'll just go ahead and promise. She's not going to tell us if we don't promise, I don't think, so we may as well. Fine, just stop whimpering like a lost puppy. You're embarrassing yourself. <sighs> Here goes nothing. This is my secret laboratory. <laughs> where I design and test my inventions. I mean, it's, it, there's an option to not buy it, but I think she's telling the truth, so I'm gonna buy it, yeah. Your laboratory, where you invent things. Yes. You, a cheerleading horse riding dress wearing debutante. Jenny! Yes. I want to believe you, Susie, but you know how crazy that sounds. That's why you can't tell anyone. 
If people found out, I'd lose everything. Could it be true? Susie Glatt's in fact a secret nerd genius. Was she really leading a double life? There's only one way to find out. Susan Quincy Glatz, I'm gonna have to ask you a few questions. Interrogation! The interrogation of Susie Glatz. Alright, let's see if we can get some clues here. Oh, here we go, what's this? Oh, jeez! That's a... <laughs> Pink bows, fluffy bears, stylish clothes. She can't possibly be a scientist. Do you really expect me to believe that you aren't obsessed with boy bands in the color pink? Brain or bimbo, which one is it? I am a scientist. But I also believe in the importance of good skincare and the power of matching accessories. You sound ridiculous. Susie couldn't be pretty, popular, and smart. That was just... greedy. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. I love it. That is 100% Jenny's response. <laughs> Keeping a welding torch in your hair seems like you're just asking to burn down to the ground. <laughs> I think Jenny might be a tad jealous here. I'm feeling that. A gumbled pin. The Dean was wearing one the day he died. Could Susie have played a part in the Dean's death? No. All of Jenny's instincts told her it wasn't possible, but she needed to know for sure. <laughs> How do we approach... The issue of accusing our cousin of murder. Do we be tactful or do we be blunt? What do you think? Oh, jeez. I got one for blunt, I got one for tact. What do you want here, Chad? How do you want to handle this? I got two for tact. Do we know how to be tactful? We can try and learn on the fly. Tactfully blunt, I can't do both. The trouble with our traces, Jesus. Alright, I think tact is winning here. Let's go for tact. Let's try tact. See if we can learn. You smell nice. What perfume is that? Oh, thanks. It's called Innocent. I remember you were wearing it last Thursday at the lake. I was. What did you do that day? After you left? Peggy and I took Veronica home. She was really upset. And you were there all afternoon? Yes. Why? How close is Veronica's house to the library? I don't understand. Why do you want to know all this? I need to rule you out as a suspect. Suspect? Why would I be a suspect? You're certainly very good at keeping secrets. <coughs> I didn't do anything. Just ask Peggy or Veronica. I don't know why you're friends with them. They are terrible character witnesses. First Veronica, then Keith, and now me. I never thought I'd say this, but sometimes you can be a real... jerk. What were you saying about Keith? Such language. Well, you didn't exactly make things easier for him, did you? You don't remember, do you? Oh, well, I suppose it wasn't that bad. What do you mean? After you... Interrupted the Reverend's eulogy, and after Keith asked you to stop, you tripped and knocked over the Dean's casket. And I guess they hadn't secured the lid properly, because he rolled right out to horrify gasps as you collapsed and fell into his open grave. Oh God! And that's why everyone's so worried about you. It all came flooding back. She had tried to defend her mom and repair her relationship with Keith. Instead, she had ruined everything. Jenny had lost her best friend. You should talk to Keith. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Yeah, hit up the grocery store and see if they have any I'm sorry I desecrated your father's corpse cards. 
They're in season right now, I think. <laughs> do we acknowledge her advice or do we ignore it and move on? What are you thinking? I see one for acknowledge. Yeah, this is this is heavy. I can see why she blocked all that out. That's pretty fucking horrifying. You gotta go to Hallmark for that, right? You gotta go directly to the source. You are correct. Yeah, let's 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 try acknowledging it. And Nano, you take care of yourself. Thanks for hanging around, Nano. Hope you have a good rest, and we will see you around. Yeah, let's let's acknowledge that. It's not that simple. He thinks my mom killed his dad. She felt the distance between them grow with every passing minute. How could she face him without answers? I have to find the Dean's real killer. Turtark, you want to get your partner to play this game? Uh, so far, this is a very big recommend for me. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. The hell is this? All this stuff looks authentic. But that doesn't mean it belongs to Susie. If this is really your lab, what does that thing do? That's Tim. He's a thermal imaging machine. He uses reflected thermographic projections to infer depth-related topography and subsurface bodies. Come again? He lets you see inside stuff. Hmm. Well, what about that thing? That's Judy Kate, a gamma ray induction polygraph. And that? Hydraulically propelled telemetric manipulator. And this? That's a tea set. What? I like to drink tea. How did you get all this stuff up here anyway? And without being seen? You'd be surprised how much you can hide in a giant stuffed teddy bear. I know what's going on here. You've stolen all this stuff. Oh. And you're planning to sell it all to buy more fluffy cushions or pink horses or something. Jenny. I didn't steal anything. Some of the parts are from my father's factory. The rest I bought with my allowance. That's some allowance. If you didn't steal it, why are you worried about people finding out? I'm head cheerleader. I'm captain of the equestrian team. If the other girls knew about this, they'd laugh me all the way to the back of the cafeteria. Why do you care what they think? It's not just them. If my parents found out about my lab, they'd kill me. Why? Don't they want you to be a scientist? I think they'd like me to marry a scientist. Dad says science is a man's job. Girls are supposed to bake pies and become prom queen. Ugh, everyone in Arthurton is stuck in the past. If anyone else showed him the things I've created, he'd call them a genius and make them his lead scientist. So tell him. Prove him wrong. I... I just can't. You have to keep my secret. I'm begging you, Jenny. Poor Susie. All of her secrets laid bare. Jenny couldn't help but feel... Disgusted. Jenny! Maybe there was more to Susie than she had first presumed. Oh my god. <laughs> Why are children to play with gamma rays? Modern kids these days, man. I don't understand it. Sir Tark, I'm really proud that my partner started playing video games again. Oh, that's awesome. Really cool. Really cool. <laughs> Jenny, she can be a good detective. It's just sometimes she has trouble overcoming her own... Uh, what do you call it? Pre-assumptions, perhaps? We had a bunch of books on the floor as well. Seeing textbooks strewn about the floor reminded Jenny of something. My journal! I need to get my stuff back. Where are my clothes? Oh, Gerald took them. Who the hell is Gerald? Our butler. Of course you have a butler. He's taken them to be cleaned and pressed. They'll be ready in a few days. Well, I need them. Now. I've got a dress that would be perfect for you. It's got purple bows, and the sequence will really bring out the color of your eyes. Should we be polite here? Or do we want to just be a jackass about this? How, how, how should we approach this? I should see you run away in terror. There's nowhere to run. We're locked in. Wow, Chad actually wants me to be polite here. Yeah, she does seem like she's trying to help. I feel like she's being earnest. Let's just be polite. Let's be polite. No, thank you. I'd rather be burned to death. Jenny! 
No one's gonna take me seriously in a purple ball gown. And where's my other stuff? Don't tell me Gerald's got my journal. It's irreplaceable. Like I'd let that nosy old fool see your diary. It's not a diary. It's my case notes. Right, of course. A girl's gotta have a place to keep her secrets. I put all your stuff in the lockbox under my pillows. Are you kidding me? No wonder my head hurts. <laughs> Jenny was confident that Susie wasn't involved in the Dean's murder. She wasn't evil. Just insufferable. Jenny! All right, I'm gonna grab my stuff and get out of here. Oh, while you're wandering around, can you find some parts for me? I need a battery and a transistor to finish this device. What? No! I did something for you. It was true. Susie had kept Jenny's journal safe. And the Dean's ring. She'd even revealed her darkest secret to Jenny. Fine! Enough already! What's a transistor? Oh! It's an electronic voltage regulator that- Just tell me what it looks like. It's a tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. If you can't find one in my bedroom, there are some old boxes in the attic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transistor and battery. Got it. Go, Jenny! Woo! I've got to get out of here. <laughs> oh my god. She's so mean all the time. I can't take it. She doesn't have to be this mean. She shouldn't be this mean. Extremely rude. I love the guilt tripping there, that's amazing. Gallery art. What else have we got over here? Cheerleader slash scientist? I kinda love the idea. I could use a cheer scientist in my life. That seems like a good kind of friend to have. Somebody who will encourage you and cheer you on, but also can make you cool science gadgets. I am 100% down for this. Where do I sign up? You can make it nicer with your choices at least some- I mean, we tried to be polite there and that wasn't- That wasn't spectacular. <laughs> that wasn't great. We did try though. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, chatty is horrible and I did let you guys choose. It's true. Bunch of old science fair projects. They had all been submitted by Anonymous, and they'd all won first prize. These awards should be hanging on the walls downstairs. It was sad to see all these marvelous accomplishments hidden away in the attic. Susie wanted so badly to please her parents, to live up to their expectations of what a Glatz girl should be. She never even told them she'd entered the science fairs. Something hidden here, too. Let's see what we got back here. A oh. tiny metal object with an antenna and three legs. Looks like a transistor to me. Uh, now, where can I find a battery? I think I know where we're gonna find a battery. Remember that creepy talking teddy bear downstairs? I bet we could probably get the teddy bear, the, the battery out of there. That would be kind of cool, Bezerl. I would read the hell out of that. Unfortunately, I don't think Jenny's author would be a big fan of that. He doesn't seem to enjoy the, uh... He doesn't seem to enjoy what's happening already. He just wants everything to be chill here. Oh, dog! Doggo! Yes! Now we're talking. Now we are playing this game. Woo! Doggo sticker found. That may have to go on the journal once we find it again. I'm sorry, Mr. Pig, but I need your batteries. I love you! I love you! This will only hurt for a second. <laughs> Thank you, pig, for donating your body to science. 
That's Susie's stuff taken care of. But I still haven't found my own. She said it was under the pillow in her bed. Let's go check that out next then. <laughs> we murdered it! My god. <laughs> Get out of there, come on. Keep moving, move along. There we go. Let's see. Stars, lips, hearts, and beakers. What would a girl like Susie use as a password? Gee, I wonder. Let's set all to beakers. Oh, this is the same thing as the... Oh, no. Alright, so... We're gonna do the, the middle one last. Alright, so this one first. Set that to right there. Then we do the outer ring. And then the middle one. Of course it was the beakers. Clever. I stop! Jenny hid the ring in her pocket and flipped through the pages of her journal. No obvious signs of tampering. At least Susie knows how to mind her own business. I'll give her the battery and transistor, and then I'll find a way out of this place. It's true, that's actually pretty clever. All right, back upstairs then. <laughs> Way the most foul. It was for a good cause. That would be a good team. You got Batwoman and Oracle right here. It's right there. That would be so amazing. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way to get the better without breaking. You'd think so. That seemed a little bit drastic. I agree. That seemed incredibly drastic and violent. But here we are. Here you go. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Now, back to the task at hand. Making my escape. Don't you want to know what these parts are for? Only if it will help me get out of here. Ah! Careful! That's a stick of dynamite! What? Dynamite? Are you crazy? You could have blown me to bits. I did say be careful. What are you making bombs for? They're not bombs. They're silent explosives. Silent explosives? What? Think about it. Dynamite that doesn't make a sound. Impossible, you say? Not at all. My first breakthrough came when I discovered the unique properties of... I can use this to blow my way out of here. Um, the explosion might be silent, but I think my mom would notice if part of the house was missing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, thanks for the show and tell, but it's time for me to go. And how exactly are you going to leave without being seen? I'm glad you asked, Susan. I'll be making my exit through the window in the attic. Once I found a way to unlock it. Oh, you're out of luck there. My parents are super security conscious. All the windows are locked electromagnetically. Where are the controls? Downstairs, in Dad's study. And I can't get there without being seen. Is there some kind of override? It's impossible to open them from up here. Unless there was a total power failure. Well then, I know exactly what to do. Okay, well, I'll be here if you need help. The case of escaping Glatz Manor. Yeah, they are explosives. I don't know why she'd be like, oh no, no. Alright, we're gonna have to blow some shit up then. What does this machine do? That's Judy Kate. She's a portable lie detector. Portable? It's 18 feet tall and bolted to the floor. Yeah, well, I'm still working on that part. But she can detect a lie with 98% accuracy. That's quite a claim. Let's see. Good evening, small human child. I am Judy Kate, arbiter of truth, detector of lies. Since this is the first time we have met, I will need to calibrate. To begin, please answer this simple question. What is the meaning of life? What? What? How am I supposed to answer that? Ha. 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 
Just kidding. Oh, sorry. I've been experimenting with her personality chip. She's using humor to build a better rapport with subjects. <sighs> Still needs some work. To begin, please tell me your name. I love how everyone went to 42. I love you guys. I'll, we may as well tell the truth here. Who's calibrating? My name is Jenny LeClue. Welcome, Jenny LeClue. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. Alright, let's test it out. Let's give it a lie. I'm Jenny LeClue, and I'm not afraid of anything. I think I broke it. It's okay. Her fuse just tripped. She gets very sensitive if you lie to her, especially if it's a big lie. But don't worry, she'll reset in a minute. Interesting. Alright. So that's kind of wild. Interesting, interesting. Uh, what else we got over here? It's just Maggie. She helps me find things I've dropped on the floor. Why do you have a man's ring? Oh, can we trust her with the truth? Can we trust her with the truth, Chet, or should we be lying to her here? I mean, there is a giant lie detector in the background, so I don't know if we can even get away with lying here. Yeah, she did trust us, this is true. She did trust us, so yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and trust her as well. It belonged to, um... Uh, it belonged to a friend. I'm taking care of it for him. But that doesn't make any sense. I'm telling you the truth. No, I mean, why would a ring made of gold stick to a magnet? Oh. Unless... There's something more to it. Which of these machines did you say could see inside things? Good catch there, Ellie Lords. What good catch? Excuse me, Tim. We need your help. Oh, hi. hi. I didn't see you there. My name is Tim, the thermal imaging machine. Metal, plastic, wood. There's nothing I can't see inside. Except, of course, your innermost thoughts. Look, I don't need a best friend. I just need him to examine the ring. Ouch. That hurt my feelings. <laughs> Go easy on him. He's quite sensitive. Ugh. Hi, Tim. Nice to meet you. Oh, how wonderful it is to meet you, my new friend. How can I be of service? I need you to look inside something for me. I'd be delighted to. Please place the object on my soft, velvety platform. Come to me, tiny object of vast mystery and import. I like you. Reveal to me your deepest secrets. Swim in my warm bath of gamma rays. I'm peering deeply inside you. God! What's that? Deeper still. I've never seen one of those before. Fascinating! All the wonders I have seen! Well, spit it out already! One moment, please, while I paint you a picture of the journey we just shared. What is I that? knew there was something special about this ring! It's full of tiny cogs and gears. I've never seen such intricate craftsmanship. I need to borrow your microscope. Interesting. Tiny buttons hidden in plain sight. Clever. I wonder what they do. 
Well, let's find out, I suppose. <laughs> that was a lot of radiation right there. It's a little terrifying. <laughs> we should not be playing with gamma rays, but we are small children playing with gamma rays. <laughs> Tim really does need hugs. We need to go deeper. <laughs> oh my god. I think this is a puzzle. Let's see what we can do here. Alright, take care of yourself, Gamer Tragic. Thanks for hanging around. We will see you around. Alright, that did. Oh! Ow! It's not a G! It's not a G, it's instructions! Right? I thought I had something there. Kind of. Might have brute forced it there. We got it! Whoa! The ring opened up like a flower. Why would the Dean have a ring like this? Whatever its true purpose, one thing was clear. This ring was important. Important enough to kill for? Dean Strausberry, what were you involved in? Did you say Dean Strausberry? <sighs> Whose ring is that really? Susie had entrusted her deepest, darkest secret to Jenny. The least Jenny could do was be honest with her. We already decided to trust Susie before, so we're just going to continue doing that now, I think. It's the Dean's ring. Well, it was. You stole the Dean's ring? Technically, I found it. Jenny, you've got to turn that into the police! It could be important evidence! Considering the police think my mom is the Dean's murderer, I certainly won't be handing it over to them. But what if they ask me about it? I can't lie to them. I'm a terrible liar. Oh god, we're not gonna blackmail her! That's just gonna make the situation worse! No, no. We're gonna reassure her. Because if we blackmail her, she's just gonna... She's gonna have a meltdown. We're gonna trump it. Rid! No! I, if she doesn't know how to lie, I don't think she's gonna do well under blackmail. Jesus! It's not lying. It's just leaving out the parts that don't concern them. But I can't go to jail! My oh, no. parents will disown me, and my reputation will be ruined! No one's going to jail, as long as we protect each other. I'll keep your secret, you keep mine. Like... friends. Sure. Jenny. Now go back to whatever mad science experiment you were doing. I've got a window to open. You agreed to get her to trust us for eventual betrayal? I mean, Jenny is still 100% ready to throw her at her the first bus that comes up and needs something thrown under, so I think it's only a matter of time. Complex formulas filled the large chalkboard. Clearly the work of a genius. Okay, she's secretly smart. We get it. <laughs> what is all this anyway? Oh, that? I'm working on a proof to help me pick the perfect prom dress. You've got to be kidding me. I know, I know. I'm not sure it can be done either, but I've got to try. It's the biggest decision a girl has to make. Gross. Alright, so maybe Jenny's partially right about this being kind of weird. Gross. Partially. Claude is very fragile. Fragile? It's enormous. I haven't finished calibrating him yet. If you want to help, get him to pick some things up and put them down again. He needs the practice. Just don't pick up anything too heavy. 
Jenny! Don't break blood! There we go! Nice teddy bear! Oh, very nice. Very nice. What else we got? Oh, that looks very heavy. <laughs> oh, I'm out of the box! I'm out of the box! Oh, they're smart under there, too. Beautiful. We cannot pick up Susie. She's kind of in the background here. Do we, do we want to try and break Claude? Do we want to do a murder on Claude? Let's do a murder on Claude. Hmm, must have been too heavy. Please be gentle with Claude. He's only a prototype and I'm out of replacement parts. Oops. Oh, he's okay, he's okay, it's fine. It's all good. I got it! In the back of Jenny's brilliant mind, a plan was forming. I know exactly how to get out of here. How can I escape from Glatt's Manor? Well... Got dynamite that doesn't make a sound. You've got... The window that's locked electromagnetically. Oh no, here we go. When you try to lift something heavy, the robot arm overloads. And when you lie to Judy K8, she blows a fuse. When I overload the robot arm, it sparks and fuses. And when I lie to Judy K, she nearly overloads the power supply. So if I could overload them at the same time, then I might be able to short the power and open the window in the attic. But Jenny couldn't operate both machines by herself. Yeah, I was thinking we were going to have to go EMP as well, but this works too. We have seen a lot of blown power in here, so that kind of makes sense. All right. Well, let's see if Susie will help us. Susie? Yes? I need your... Asking Susie for help was worse than having a tooth pulled out. I need you to do something. Of course. What can I do to help? I didn't say I needed your help. Oh, sorry. I don't owe you anything. Okay, okay. What do you want me to do? Go stand by Judy, Kate. Uh, all right. But why? No time for questions. Just wait for my instructions. Jenny, stop being such a jerk! Crying out loud! Susie, are you ready? Welcome back, Susie Glatz. I am ready to detect. Please speak a truth or a lie. Okay, I'm ready. What should I do now? Just hold on until I give the signal. Alright, here we go. The robot arm strained under the weight of the giant metal object. Okay, Susie. Tell a lie. And make it a big one. Oh, okay. A big lie. Ooh, I've got just the thing. I'm wearing black socks. Lie. No, Susie, a big lie. Bigger. Something terrible. I'm just no good at lying. Tell Judy Kate you killed Dean Strasberry. What? That's horrible. I can't say that. Do you want to help or not? Yes, but. Then hurry up and say it. 
Okay, okay. I killed the Dean. Louder! I killed the Dean. Bigger! I killed Dean Strawsberry. Say it like you mean it! I murdered Dean Strawsberry! I bashed his brains in! Now I danced on his grave! <laughs> Wow. That was messed up. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm a horrible person. As Susie Glatz contemplated every bad thing she'd ever done in her life, Jenny heard the unmistakable sound of success. It worked. Oh, we gotta go. Actually, should we talk to her for I, no, the Windows not gonna relock or anything? Yeah, no, so she did tell the truth there. We don't have to worry about that, but still, that got pretty dark. Jesus. Oh, we can't even talk to her again. That's sad. Yeah, we, we can we can get rid of her as a suspect, I suppose. <laughs> that works. We shattered that poor girl! I don't know if she's ever gonna be the same. I feel bad. I feel I didn't I didn't want it to be like that, but here it is. Here it is. Jenny! Alright, take care of yourself. You can't you leave now. It's past curfew. Watch me. Well, you can't go out wearing pajamas. I'm not playing dress up with you while my mom is trapped in jail for a crime she didn't commit. The real killer is still out there. And what if you find him? What then? Jenny paused. She hadn't thought that far ahead. Aren't you scared? What do you think, Jet? Is Jenny scared to actually come face to face with the true killer? Or has that not occurred to her either? <laughs> Yeah, even after we shattered her, she's still trying to help us. She's good people. She is good people. All right, Chad. Yeah, she is. Rin, uh... <laughs> it's true. Chad says yes, though. Let's, let's go with yes. Casey, no, yeah, she probably would say no, though. But I... maybe we'll give her the benefit of the doubt that it has occurred to her. Maybe she kind of knows that there's a little bit of fear in her heart, even if she doesn't admit it to herself. Of course Jenny was scared, but she would never admit that to Susie. My mom always says, a great detective shows courage in the face of danger. Now is the time to be courageous. Well, let me help you. We can work out a plan together. Sorry, Susie, but I work alone. At least take this with you then. So we can stay in touch. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna accept her help, right? We were just talking about how she's good people. We gotta accept the help, right? Chat, we're we're down with that. I hope you gotta be down with that. Don't let me down here, Chat. It actually says Susie Talkie on there, which is pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, let's be friends. Let's let's make a step towards a tentative friendship. Let's do it. Let's do it. Fine, I'll take it. But don't call me. I'll call you. Okay. Good luck. And be careful. There's still a killer out there. I'll be fine. Jenny, you won't tell anyone about my lab, right? Only if you cover for me. Of course. I'm always here for you. We're going to be best friends, Jenny LeClue. I just know it. Sure. Right after I sign up for cheerleading. Jenny, come on! Give her an inch! To catch a real killer, Jenny needed her detective gear. But that was at home, across town and swarming with police. It wasn't wise to travel through town after curfew. To avoid being caught, she'd have to find another way home. 
Excellent, thought Jenny. Time to exercise my sneaking muscles. Vexy, I'm glad you're enjoying. Oh, do we gotta do stealth now? We gotta do stealth. That's exciting. I'm so bad at stealth, but today... Today we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work today! The curfew was from before the murder. What they were doing is apparently they didn't want people out at night because they're working on the power lines. And they said it was dangerous to be out at night. So that's why the curfew was from. Jenny Metal. paused at the edge of the roof, her teeth chattering in the chill wind. Below her, Lake Nowhere glowed eerily in the darkness. From this vantage point, she could see all the way to the lighthouse at the center of the lake. Only the wealthiest families in Arthurton could afford such spectacular views. If I cross the lake, it's just a short stroll through the Forgotten Forest to my house. But navigating the lake at night was not an easy task. Many accomplished sailors had met their doom on the ragged rocks of Bear Claw Bend. Well, I've already worked out a way across. Time to get off this roof before someone spots me. Why do they have a huge crystal statue? This was originally a quartz mining town. Oh no. Damn it! Think fast, Jenny. And just like that, Jenny was gone. Her first great adventure cut short before it had begun. What? Uh, I'm right here. Uh oh. Just hanging around. All right then, we're good, we're good. <laughs> so yeah, this town was originally a quartz mining town. That's why there's crystals all over the place. I don't know where we're shipping to, but... See if we can find something that looks worthy of shimmying over to. Oh, there we go. Slowly working our way down. Excellent. Uh, where are we sneaking to now? <laughs> the author got all spooked there. There's something to be seen over here. <laughs> Something hidden over here. Ah, another uh, postcard piece. Excellent. Let's see what else we got going on over here. Anything? Hey, it's Honda! This game is really cool. I'm enjoying the heck out of it. How are you doing today, Tonda? Hope you are having a fantastic weekend so far. And if we have any mods around, can I get a shout out for Tonda Gossa? I would appreciate that. Got another secret right there. Let's see what that is. Ah, more gallery art. Yeah, having a great weekend, Tonda. Thank you for asking. All right, take care of yourself, Kosaku. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Hopefully we'll see you around. And have a good rest of your weekend. That's the way to Main Street. I can't risk being caught by the sheriff or his goons. The safest way home is across the lake. All right, so let's head back that way then. Now, as Jenny mentioned, it is super dangerous to go across the lake at night, especially when you're a small child that maybe doesn't necessarily have great nautical experience, but... Beggars can't be choosers, and, you know, her mom's in jail for a crime she probably didn't commit. We gotta set her free, Chet. We gotta set her free. Careful, careful now. Stay low. Stay low. Alright, we're good, we're good. All right, let's actually let's make sure there isn't any secrets over here. And there is, of course. Ha! Yet another postcard scrap. I wonder how we're doing on getting all those. Ah, oh, we're missing one. All right. Hopefully we'll find that one. Quartz come, uh, is a Slavic language lore word. Oh, interesting. 
English does love its loan words. So I'm hidden over here. There is. What do we get? Another gallery item. Cool, cool. All right. I'm glad I found that run button too. What's that sound? What the hell? Paper airplane? True believer, I am the one you seek. I swim in the shadows of giants that stir beneath an eerie silence. Follow the path, reach the truth. What a curious and cryptic message. Was it meant for her? And who had written it? Friend or foe? That is a very good question. I have no This idea. could be from the killer. But it was far too dangerous to find out. I have to find out. <laughs> and so she decided to ignore the message and carry on to her house. There's no way I'm ignoring the case of the mysterious message. Oh, jeez. Welp. Let's see. True believer, I am the one you seek. I swim in the shadows of giants. All right, we'll see if we can figure it out there. But we gotta get on the lake either way, because that's where it came from. Is there anything over this way? There's not. All right, to the boat! The SS Susie. A gift from Susie's father as a thank you for preparing his lunch one day. Jesus. This'll get me across the lake in no time. Unfortunately, the boat didn't belong to her. I'll just borrow it for a couple of hours. They won't even notice it's gone. But borrowing something without asking first was just stealing. It's always easier to ask for forgiveness than wait for permission. Jenny! Of course, the boat needed a key. Jeez, nobody trusts anyone these days. There must be some other way to start the engine. They're stealing a boat here. Warning, risk of electric shock, third degree burns, smoldering flesh or death, warranty void if removed. A sticker too. Got the sticker. Uh, is there anything else to see around here? Ha! Another gallery item. Let's pop this panel. I bet I can hotwire the boat if I get this panel off. Risk of electric shock. It was far too dangerous. I love danger. Jenny! There we go. I don't know how she's getting these screws off. If she doesn't have anything to pick the lock, how does she have a screwdriver on her? We do have Susie on the Susie talkie, that's true, but also Jenny doesn't like asking for help. Damn, this one's stuck. Foiled at the last moment by a rusty screw. Oh well, time to turn back. There's only one screw left. I can just pry the panel back. And so she very carefully pulled on the panel. Careful, careful. That's wow, hard. looks complicated. Far too complicated for a child to even attempt. Mom always says, a great detective focuses on the solution, not the problem. It looks like I can bypass the ignition by turning the dials until all the lights are illuminated. Piece of cake. All right. I, I think I see what we're doing here. All right. So we need to make sure all the lights are actually pointing to cables first. And then we just need to make sure that power is being it. routed through all of them. Jenny had found a way to cross the lake, but she was still a long way from home. She pulled out her journal and plotted a course. First, I'll navigate my way around Skull Island. Next, I'll sail up the river to the Almasdan Bridge. 
then it's just a short stroll through the Forgotten Forest. And finally, home. Through the what? Got it. Let's go. That is kind of a nice comparison. Stanley's Parable is one of my favorite games of all time. So I do enjoy that. And yeah, the author fighting her is kind of cute too. I like that. Jenny had never crossed the lake after dark. Come to think of it, she'd never even driven a boat before. She thrust the throttle forward and felt a cool wind whip through her hair. Sneaking around after curfew had its benefits. All right. We have our route plotted. And we got a mini game. Oh, jeez. Let's avoid those rocks. Oh, this is dangerous. Yeah, I, I can see how people have wrecked here before. God, even the daytime, this seems like this would be dangerous. It's all right. Small child, night boating through the rocks. No problem. No problems. This is all right. Just. Oh, hey, something hidden? I hidden stuff. Where's the hidden stuff? Show it to me, game. Where is it? Where is it? I was told there was hidden stuff. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's going to be tough to get. Fish sticker. Worth it. Worth it. Suddenly, suddenly see. Oh, God. If there's any eldritch monstrosities underneath the waves, I am out. Vexy, I would actually recommend this. I'm having a lot of fun with this. If you're watching this and it's feeling like it's your vibe, I say go for it. Nope, nope, nope. Sir, careful now. Oh, this is narrow. Careful. Careful now. Turn. A little bit. A little bit. There we go. Oh, God! You still remember the Lost Woods code? That's awesome. Bezerl, that is badass. I have not played that game in a very long time. I think we're heading up this way, right? I believe. I haven't seen the bridge yet, so I think we're still heading up this way. I bet there's probably secrets the other way, but I don't feel like going for it. So many times you know it in my heart, that's awesome. Alright. Continuing on. Alright, we got a little bit of open water here, that's nice. Hang on. What is that? Signposts, you are here. What the shit? This is a lot more complicated than it looked like. Shallow grave waterway? Jesus. Alright, this is insane. It looked so easy on the postcard. This lake is fine! There's nothing fine about this lake. There is nothing fine about this lake. Alright. Let's head through Shallow Grave Waterway. Which I'm sure is just a fanciful name, like Greenland. Doesn't, doesn't actually mean anything. No one has to die in the rocks. It's fine. Fine. There we go. Just slide right through there. Slide right through. It's fine. It's okay. We're not worried. No one here is worried. Ooh, kiss. Nice all in. Holy shit, that was a huge all in. Ninth place now. Jesus, big moves. Congratulations. All right, this is, this is going to be tricky. This is gonna be tricky. Watch out for the buoys. Watch out for the buoys. 
We avoided the rocks so we don't want to hit the buoys now. Alright, this looks like another signpost. Let's check it out and get our bearings. Alright! So, again, I bet there's probably some secrets south of us, but... No, we don't have time for this. This is too dangerous. Okay, Cena! Congratulations on the all-in as well. Good going. And Warden! Another all-in! Holy shit, the bot is uh, feeling generous today. No, Turretark, I need that! God, that would be horrifying, Vexy. Jesus. Alright. So we need to head north and around the Skull Island Lighthouse and Sandwich Shop. Let's do it. Oops. Come on, game, help me out here. Can I not do anything about the camera? Jesus, there we go. Alright. There she be. Skull Island. Lighthouse and Sandwich Shop. Arthurton's best lake. Oh my god, that's actually horrifying. That is actually kind of horrifying. I see where the name comes from. I do. I I made fun of them for naming Skull Island, home to an abandoned lighthouse and an excellent sandwich shop, decommissioned over a hundred years ago. But the light mysteriously continued to illuminate the darkness. I made fun of them for calling it Skull Island before. I'm gonna have to eat my words. That actually makes perfect sense. I actually have no idea what they would call it. If not Skull Island. Oh god, that's close. I, I don't know if we can touch the buoys. We might actually be able to, but I'm not taking the chance. I am not taking that chance. Do you want to move there, Rin? Honestly, Rin, I could see you with the life of a lighthouse keeper. It, it's got the right brand of melancholy and hardiness that I associate with you with. I could totally see that. Oh yeah, it does look like the guy from Medieval, doesn't it? I forget what his name was. Oop, oop, careful. Careful, wrong way. If you had internet, you'd go for it. I could see it living there. I am a little terrified of the sea, though, so I don't think I could probably make a living of it. Fortesque! That does sound familiar. I think you're right. right now we need to head around here, I believe. Sir Daniel Fortesque! There we go. Thank you, Chet. Alright. Careful now. There's a signpost here. Let's get our bearings again. Okay, so Bear Claw Bend is where she was talking about people wrecking before, so this could actually be the toughest part. But all we need to do is arc around this, and then the bridge is up next, so we're making progress. Oh! I didn't know you could hit the signpost, but alright, we're fine, we're fine. We are fine, it's all good. Didn't even occur to me that was an option. Well, that's the first thing we hit this whole time, so it's not too bad. So there might be something secret over here. That's pretty cool. What do we got? Secret? Secret game? You told me there was a secret here. Where's it at? Come on, game. There it is. Gallery item. I'll take that. I'm trying, I'm trying real hard not to break things, but this is, this is really hard. Uh, can we get through the flotsam there? Is that going to be a problem? I hope it's not going to be a problem. That is a problem. I don't think we can get through this. No, we can't get, we can't go through there. But we need to go through there. Uh, let's go back to the signpost. Let's go back to the signpost, I guess. What am I missing here? Yeah, that should be where we're going. Do I need to ram it? What's going on here? 
It looks like we have to go, right? Hmm. Well, I guess let's pick up some speed and try to ram our way through. That sounds like a terrible idea, but hey, I'm good at those. Sometimes terrible ideas are the only ideas I have. True story, true story. Ramming speed! That didn't work at all. Jetsam is cargo intentionally thrown overboard. Flotsam is cargo that comes up to the surface after the sinking. I did not know what the difference between those are. Thank you for letting me know, Kiss. I appreciate that. No idea too terrible for me to try it. I mean, there have been some that I've shied away in the past. Because they were really terrible. I guess let's see what's up here. No, this is just a dead end. Well, how the heck am I supposed to get through then? I guess I can try and get more speed? I'm not sure. Oh, I know, sticker. That's cute. Stumped here. What are we doing here? Like, that's definitely the way we're supposed to be going. Unless the game wants me to do something else first. Like, we could head up to Round Rock, I guess, but I really don't want to. Take a peek up there, I guess? Or hey, we could go down here, I suppose, right? Or no, that's where we came from, right? Yeah, we came from down there. Or no, can we get around it this way? No, I don't think so. I'm looking, though. No, definitely not. Alright. Stalagmites and stalagmites. I believe stalagmites are the one on the ground and stalagmites are the one on the ceiling. If I remember correctly. Did you go in all the nooks and crannies along the way? I definitely did not. So I'm thinking maybe they want me to go in some of them now? So let's head up here because this is one of the nooks and crannies we did not go to before. I believe. Oh, well, this one's dead end too, then. You know, I can't go through there. I thought that was round rock as well. Uh, over here? Oh, I came in through here, didn't I? No, I'm, I'm just turning around. Um, all right, one more time, one more time. Let's check the signpost. Alright, so yeah, Round Rock's supposed to be right above us. I suppose Bagel Bay? We haven't checked Bagel Bay? We can go check that out. Yeah, I guess let's go check out Bagel Bay. We gotta go somewhere since that's not working out. I imagine it's just more secrets, but we have somewhere to go. Let's take a look. Yeah, no, just more secrets, it looks like. Well, let's grab whatever this is. Ooh, the last postcard scrap. Ooh, hey, some puzzle, what do you know? Um. Well, let's see. Let's let's do the obvious one first. 
This one rather obviously goes right there. Um, let's switch some of the stuff to the side. Get this out of the way. This is the other corner, clearly. And... Let's see, so that would mean... This probably goes right about here. There we go. So that leaves this... Go down here. Put this up at the top. And finally... spooky. Let's see. Hey mom, summer camp is going great. We took a field trip to the observatory last night. I've never seen so many stars. Ricky knew all the constellations. He's so smart and stup super cute. And he held my hand. Don't worry, he's only two years older than me. Please don't tell dad. I miss you all so much. Love, Stella. And then there's a little... Connect the dots of a dragon? But those numbers are all over the place. That's weird. wonder if those numbers mean something else. I want to have space to do puzzles again. They are fun. I do appreciate those. Um, Alright, so... We'll come back to that later. In the meantime, there is nothing in Bagel Bay over here. See, there might have been something we missed on the one. Then. As a matter of fact, I think I know what we missed, and we might have to go a ways back. Shoot, alright. Let's go back. I think we might have missed something. Shit! Because there was one other area that we didn't go to earlier, and I think maybe the game was hinting we need to go there. I hope that's not what it is, but... Oh, we're going to have to make the trek anyway. Alright, so... Head back around Skull Island. Which is, of course, sp spooky as hell. And how do I want to take this on this way? Yeah. The camera is a little wonky in some parts here, you may notice. It's south here. And we're gonna check the signpost here real quick. Alright, so the danger low visibility part is where I thought we might have to go, but I don't know if we can get down there. No? Yeah, that's a bunch of debris as well, so we can't get down there either. Well, I can only think of one area that we haven't gone to, so let's go check that out real quick. Which is all the way to the north up here. Let's see if we can get up there and see if there's anything uh, interesting in that direction. And we'll go from there. Right all the way up here, I think. Or we can go farther. There's another signpost right here. Alright, so that little area to the north we haven't been to. I guess there's another place over to the west we haven't been to either. Let's see if we can find. This. A little secret. Alright, we'll go grab that. Ooh, part of another postcard, all right. That's actually pretty cool. Right, nothing else up here. I suppose we do have one other area to check. And then we'll head back and see if we can get what we're supposed to be getting to. Oh, this part is dangerous. I'm gonna go this way, don't I? This place is probably easier. There we go. Uh, 
Let's see. Yeah, I try to keep the number of discords I'm in as well down as well. It is not great. I think I'm in like 15 and it's already kind of overwhelming. Oh, this is, is this the beginning? Jeez. Alright, I think we might have seen everything then. Actually not letting me go any further, I don't think. Let's see if there's anything down here. Have been, ooh, hello! I think I just found the shadow of the great beast. Yeah, yeah, I think that's where we're supposed to be going. Alright, alright, we got a lead. We got a lead. Is that where we're headed then? That's gotta be where we're headed. Is there a way in there, is the question. Let's go up there and check. I don't know how I missed that the first time around. Well, yeah, it's a little terrifying, but we'll see if we can get in there. Alright. Oh, I think that was a little grotto where I was in. I felt like it was trying to make me turn back, but no, I think we do have to go in there. For some reason, it felt like the game didn't want to let me through, but no, I think that is where we're going now. Interesting. Alright, let's, let's squeeze through here. Very carefully. Yeah, I can barely accelerate, but I suppose the game doesn't want me smashing myself on the rocks. That's actually cool if I kind of have an adaptive throttle based on where you are. This will be where that note came from then. Where the note told us to go at least. I swim in the shadows of giants. This must be the place. What's here? Whoa, jeez. Whoa, that was huge. I have to get a closer look. Interesting. Are we supposed to do that to the big one? Elusive red herring, a rare and fantastic sight. Can't believe they really exist. Jenny had always believed they were a fisherman's tale, but seeing them firsthand. She's so beautiful. But what was stuck in her scales? Ooh. A message in a bottle. Curious. Yeah, the red herring, I love that. I thought it was a joke earlier, but no, it's real. It's real. I am the voice of reason. I walk amongst the sunken ships that once sailed through the glowing mist. It's another clue. This case just got more dangerous. Jetty had no idea who was behind these messages. This could be an elaborate trap. Or it could be the answer I need to prove my mom's innocence. The best course of action was to go back and get help from an adult. No, I have to see where this leads. On my own. Alright, she mentioned something about glowing mist before. Sunken ships, glowing mist. That should be easy to spot. Thanks, fishies! 
All right. Sunken ship's glowing mist. I'm not sure where that is, but we'll see. Ooh, that was wild. Changes barrels through the maze without going to the story plot points. I just, I thought I could get to the end and I'd be cool, suave, and a good navigator. Clearly, that wasn't what the game was thinking of. All right. Citation agram. That's a weird way to send mail, but I suppose it did get to it its intended uh, recipient. So you can hardly argue with results in that case. Oh, no, 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 just... Oh. Relative steering is a little dangerous sometimes. Okay. Okay. Sunken ships. Glowing mist, I think. That might be down to the south here, but we'll see. Or no, that was the low visibility area. That's probably the opposite of glowing mist. Alright, let's just go, and we'll see what we can find. This isn't going backwards, is it? I don't think so. I hope not. No, this might actually be going backwards. Yeah, this is going backwards. Shoot. Alright. So where are we going from here, then? squeeze through here now. Careful now. Careful. Careful. There we go. Alright. So check the signpost. See where we want to go from here. Alright. Uh, so we'll check out the low visibility area and we'll go from there. Who cares about science? We're a subnautic echo the dolphin? I mean, we're mostly just in a boat, but... We're trying not to wreck on the rocks. That's the, the tricky thing. Now, the shallow grave area, I think, is just supposed to be, like, super dangerous. Because this is... Super dangerous. Not too much to see here, either. I mean, low visibility could be... From mist, I suppose. After we go through the mist, bagels! Who doesn't love bagels? Chat, declare your favorite flavor of bagels. I need to know. Let's hear it. Tell me what you love as far as bagels. Onion, that's a good one. Underappreciated one, I think. I'm seeing some mist. Oh, I'm seeing some mist. And, ooh. I think we can head south now. We can. We weren't able to get down here. I can't see a thing. I must be heading in the right direction. We weren't able to get through here before, but we can now. Salt or sesame from you? Very nice. Up oh, here we go. Are we trying to do the like, clue run in less than thirteen nautical miles? If we are, we're failing. We're failing pretty hard. Cream cheese! <laughs> you do need some cream cheese. Oh, this is going to be fun getting back out of as well. It's just tricky to navigate in general. And at night of all times! Come on! Ah, here we go. Jenny navigated carefully through the thick fog. Oh, it smells like rotten fish. Many ships had lost their bearings here, grounded on the ragged rocks, swallowed by the lake. Maybe I could shed some light on these ghost ships. I mean, 
mean, we are shedding light on him. Not making any friendlier, though. Oh, we can make him disappear, too. That's weird. Ooh. Oh, hey! There's a bottle on that one. Shit, we passed it, though. Dang it. We're gonna have to make another go-around, then. If there's anything else to see down here. I thought there was something there. There was definitely another bottle in the, uh... The mask there. Oh, I found a pick of the puzzle! Nice! This game is getting kind of creepy. I was not expecting that. Yeah, I... I mean, I'm not brave enough to be boating, period. But here she is. Boating in the dark, in the fog. It's terrifying. Let's grab that bottle. Hopefully it doesn't get lost before we get there. There we go. Another message. This is starting to feel like a wild goose chase. Well, where are the goose here? I am the hope in darkness. I sit in a spiral of ancient stone. Against the clock, I move alone. Damn it. What's with all these cryptic messages? And where are they leading? I should get out of here before I turn into a ghost. Alright, take care, Groshin. We'll see you in an hour if we're still on, although I don't think we will be. Alright. Let's get out of here. And next stop will be uh, the spiral, which looks like the objectively most difficult place to navigate in this entire place, so that's horrid. But here we are. We are committed to figuring out who's sending us these messages, I suppose. I mean, I am curious. This is not the mystery I was expecting to be on, but here we are. Just about out of here. Phew, made it out alive. Let's go find this spiral of ancient stone. Let's do it. All right, northward we go. Oh, the bagels are after the spiral. We'll probably still have to go to Bagel Bay, actually. Since they're they're sending us to every side area, I imagine they're gonna make us go to Bagel Bay. So don't you worry. Bagels are still happening, although I should warn you, it is very likely that it's just going to be a bay shaped like a bagel. Which is like a bagel that you can't eat, which is the worst kind of bagel. I need to stress this. Don't, I'm trying not to lie. I'm, I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. What are you calling me out for nothing here? It's a bay that's very hot and boiling bagels. Mm. That is a bay I would like to visit. Very salty bagels, though. Cream cheese bagel, delicious. Now, where is the spiral? Is it up here? It might, yeah, I see a bunch of more debris has been cleared. All right. So the debris is just a gating mechanic to stop you from going somewhere you're not supposed to be yet. That's actually kind of cute. And this isn't so bad so far, but it's going to get worse the farther in we go. Because uh, the farther we go into a spiral, the tighter the turns we'll have to make are. Oh, jeez. Honestly, I kind of do want to get back to solving mysteries. This is fun, but not entirely what I signed up for. We'll make it work. We'll make it work, though. Possible secrets.
There we go, more get our yard. Nice. Onward! I assume we're just going to the center. That seems like the thing the game is going to want me to do. Alright. And... The night grew dark and eerie. Why do I feel like I'm being watched? You ominous. How should we deal with the bird, Chet? Do we be cautious or do we be assertive? What are you feeling? I mean, on one hand, you know, courage is important. Uh, on the other hand, it's, it's just a bird. Ah, oh, yeah, oh, you gotta have Odin right there. We should be cautious. Yeah, we don't wanna piss off Odin. Let's just be cautious. Nice birdie. What are you doing all the way out here? How rude. It's fine. No worries. It's, it's all good. Alright, let's see what we can find here. Ooh. About a murder of crows. It threw a rock at me. Whoa! That was not a rock. It was a crab. We almost had a crab battle there. <laughs> All right, so that happened. Oh God. This is freaking weird. Ha! Oh, we're gonna have to get that bottle in the next pass. Crab battle! Yeah, they threw a crab at me! Who throws a crab? Who throws a crab? I am the answer to the unasked question. I stand inside the crescent moon. Below death's gaze, I wait for you. I wait for you. This could be the last clue. So caught up in unraveling the mystery, Jenny failed to recognize how dangerous this chase really was. Who is waiting at the crescent moon? Whoever it was, our intrepid detective would need to be extremely careful. The guys in Seattle Public Market with their front of salmon? I hope not. Crescent moon. Below death's gaze. Time to wrap up this case. Alright. Let's get going then. Careful now. What the heck? I was pressing the wrong. Oh, what is it doing up and down now? Oh, relative steering. It's so confusing. Alright. Let's get the heck out of here. Get out of the spiral, we'll head back over to Skull Island, and we'll see if we can figure out what uh, below death's gaze means in this context. Oh yeah, CJ, the conspiracy theorist. He does seem like he might be doing this. Are we just following CJ? If so, he's going to a lot of work here. I'm definitely going to smack him in the face. Definitely going to smack him in the face. Interestingly enough, we do know that CJ was in the library the day of the murder. Though I don't think he would have been there at the time of the murder. Unless I suppose he was the murderer. I guess that's possible. That would be bad, though. That would be very bad. 
Alright, let's check the sign. Alright, crescent moon below death's gaze. Like, it's gotta be Bingo Bay, right? Like, that's just the only place we haven't checked. Let's go down to Bingo Bay. Let's see what's going on down in Bingo Bay. And sure enough, there is a bunch more uh, debris that's been cleared out. Should be able to sneak through in here. Like it looks more like a full moon than a crescent moon, but whatever. Maybe it worked out. Or maybe it was referring to the rock, not the space inside the rock. I suppose that's more of a crescent moon type thing. And there is something right at the center of all of that. Mysterious Island. Hello? Uh, who's there? St stay right there! Don't come any closer! Identify yourself! Um, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on here. Uh, so let's just play through this. The police are right behind me, and they're very angry. But I might be able to help you if you just talk to me. Okay, if you won't cooperate, I'll... I'll have to come over there. Oh, it was just my imagination. Thank God. The dog's locked lunch before the dog! Ah! Ah! Get away from me, you maniacal murderer! The dogs bark loudest before the dawn! CJ? The dogs bark loudest before the dawn! Uh, hang on, I remember this. The early bird can't catch the lazy worm. The wind blows strongly from the east. Lobster! Uh. People in glass houses should invest in curtains. The evening sky is full of fireflies. The last donut is the tastiest. Excellent, Jay. They haven't broken you yet. The notes were from you? I thought you were the Dean's killer. Why did you make me go through all that if you were already in the boat? This is the only place safe from their prying ears. We have to hurry. This line isn't secure. Line? We're talking in person. Exactly. Now quickly, before they get a fix on our location. What did you want to tell me? Seriously? You can't keep doing this. You contacted me. Did I? Actually, I'm glad you did. I need to ask you a few questions about the Dean's death. Good, Jenny. Question everything. Trust no one. The interrogation of CJ. He's exhausting. Ugh. Oh, new sticker. No more secrets. Gallery art. Oh, uh, let's see if there's anything else like that. More gallery art. More gallery art. There we go. Another sticker. CJ, all you had to do was follow the damn train. Hmm. Those 
marbles look familiar. I found your map of Arthurton in the library. Keep it! It's a great map! Very rare! Ripped it straight out of the town charter, first edition. Come to think of it, only edition. What about all your notes? Don't you need them? Nope! Got it all backed up in the cloud! What cloud? Did I say cloud? I meant head. So what do all those notes mean? Uh, for example... Who are the Shadow Men? Yes! You're starting to see differently! There are patterns everywhere! Keep searching! He did not remotely answer the question there. I love how he sounds just like Doc Brown. That is so cool. Oh, hey! What happened to your compass? Before it was wandering, but now it seems to be pointing in one direction. Exactly! Do you see now? It's not a compass at all! So what is it then? Aliens! Aliens? What are you talking about? E.T. Extraterrestrials! Beaks from another world! I know what aliens are. Come on, CJ, there's no such thing. What? No, not you too. I'm sorry, CJ, but it's time to get serious. The Dean is dead and my mom's in jail, framed for a murder she didn't commit. I need to get to the truth. The only way to truly see is to open your mind. Not everything is what it seems. If there really are aliens in Arthurton, how come you're the only person who's ever seen them? People don't see what they aren't looking for. That's why I come here every night, to observe the unobservable. The compass is my eyes. It can sense their presence where I cannot. Why don't you borrow it and find out for yourself? What do you think, Chet? Should we take the compass? I mean, it's an adventure game, so I say let's use every tool at our disposal. But, uh... Yeah, we, we should see here. Think the number 42 bust in the penultimate stop? I like it. Uh, yeah, just, just for shits and giggles, let's take it. Okay, I'll take it. I need all the help I can get. Yeah, good! You can prove my theory to be fact. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just remember, when the needle is steady, the phenomena are near. Sure. They were here before. They will return. And we'll be waiting for them. Uh-huh. Yep. Totally. Yeah, what else we got here? Oh. I think it might have been up a little higher. Oh, there's a note there. I have a card. I know you're in the library the day Dean Strasbury died. Did you notice anything unusual? Yes, I did! Great. What happened? They changed the bathroom set from strawberry to pie! DJ! It was most unpleasant. Oh. Is that all? I intended to alert the librarian as a matter of urgency. But no one was at the front desk. Quite unusual. Was there anyone else in the library? No, uh, just the Dean and I. Till I, uh, I, uh... Until you left. It's not like you to leave your research lying around. Why were you in such a hurry? I, uh, I lost track of time. I was late. For an appointment! An appointment? Where? Appointment? What are you talking about? You said you were late for an appointment. Objection! Leading the witness! This isn't a trial, CJ. It's just me, Jenny. Then I have nothing further to say, Your Honor. Hmm, there's something you're not telling me. Is there? He's hiding something from us, Chet, and I don't care for that. I am not a fan of all that. All right, what else? What else? What else have we got here? Got that bottle right there. Shoes. What else can we look at here? Anything? Something? Not seeing anything. It's supposed to be. Oh, here we go. Oh, he's got a black eye. What happened to your eye? Did you get in a fight? It wasn't a fight. More of a misunderstanding, really. A seriously purple misunderstanding? Well, 
You should see the other guy. CJ, this is serious. You have to tell me the truth. I had to do it, Jenny. They needed to learn. CJ, is this a confession? Well, we're going to find out anyway. CJ, did you murder Dean Strasbury? The Dean? Oh, no. But you just said... Good, Jenny. Suspect everyone. Even me. I don't understand. In fact, I suspected myself for quite some time. But I couldn't have done it. I want to believe you, CJ, but do you have an alibi? That's why I left these notes for you. If anyone can prove I'm innocent, it's you, Jenny LeClue. Hang on a second. Let me take a look at that. Jenny, I need your help. You know, we could have saved a lot of time if you'd just given me this message first. And risk being followed? Never! But what had piqued Jenny's interest was not the message itself. That paper. What did he write all these messages on? Well, let's see if we can assemble this again. See if we can put this back together again. Alright, so this looks like the bottom corner here. There we go. This looks like a newspaper. Interestingly enough. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Alright, so this will be the bottom corner down here. And that would mean this. Top corner up here. Uh, what else? We have one last bit of edge. Go ahead and drop that in there. We'll do that piece last. This. Where does this go? Um, oh, here we go. Nice, nice. I knew it! You wrote all these messages in a piece of newspaper. <laughs> Let's see. Is the only witness and prime suspect Miss LeClue is being held without bail at the Arthurton City Jail? Mrs. LeClue has not given any comment and has refused legal counsel when offered. Due to the nature of the case, Sheriff Winston LeClue has distanced himself from all proceedings in order to maintain a, quote, perimeter to limit the conflict of interest and uphold the law and justice to the fullest extent. The front page was missing, but even this small snippet worried Jenny. They've been peddling lies about my mom right from the start. Sheriff Winston LeClue has distanced himself from all proceedings. Well, if he won't help her, I will. Let's see. Mr. Beans, the taste you'll die for. Keep an eye out for a brand new coffee cart peddling beans all over town. Jenny couldn't help it. Every time she thought about coffee, she saw Keith's face. She heard his voice. She remembered his sadness. And she promised not to rest until she'd uncovered the truth of his father's death. All right. Local idiot ruins school play. Parents feared for children's safety and grades. An Avocado Heights school play and parade about the founders of Arthurton was ruined by one town idiot's ramblings. The man identified himself simply as CJ. Witnesses to the terribly misguided man's rant claimed that after he ran onto the stage, he began yelling at a small innocent child dressed as an acorn, later identified as Sheldon Grade 3. Witnesses recall the man barking, They are lying to you! They don't know what they're talking about! The truth is up there! at the frightened child. Principal Bagley, who had been watching from the sidelines, wrestled the man off stage and away from the now crying children. The man then ran through the streets shouting, They're trying to shut me up! They're trying to shut me up! One parent replied, Maybe it's time someone did. Police arrived soon after, and although it was a bit of a struggle to catch and arrest the man, police eventually managed to book him on charges of disturbing the peace. Another parent claimed it was the best show I've ever seen in the school, although the bit about the aliens was far-fetched. Hey Mel, welcome in! How are you feeling? Hope everything is going good with you. Glad to have you with us. This photo was taken in Avocado Heights. That's on the other side of town, miles from the library. Well, I suppose there's his alibi. Um, anything else to see there? CJ was always protesting something. The first time they had met, CJ had handcuffed himself to a bike rack outside Agatha Krusty's bakery. 
He was convinced they were hiding something in the pies. He'd lost the key to his handcuffs, so I picked the lock for him. They'd been friends ever since. That's super weird. Oh jeez, Mel, will you take care of yourself? I hope you got some time to, to, to look after yourself at least. I've been uh, watching your updates on Twitter and I'm uh, keeping my fingers crossed for you. That you get well as soon as possible. 3.55. Clearly the afternoon. So if he was on the other side of town at 3.55, there was no way he could have gotten over to the library to do the murder. So he is no longer a suspect. Good deal. Good deal. Right, there's nothing to see on this side, I don't think. It's just where all those were. Um... Look it again. That's the day of the Dean's murder. CJ couldn't have killed the Dean. All the evidence is right here. The case of the dead Dean. How can I prove CJ is innocent? All right, we got to put it all together now. So we got the clock. We got Avocado Heights. And we got the newspaper. CJ was photographed in Avocado Heights at 3.55 p.m. on Thursday. Two minutes before the Dean died. There's no way CJ could have killed him. Alright, CJ's innocent. That's good to know. That's good, CJ, That's you're good. innocent! What a relief! <laughs> but you really shouldn't be going around town terrorizing children. You're going to end up in jail again. That wouldn't be so bad. They have the best beds in town. CJ! Every part of my being is telling me that my mom is being framed. But I don't understand why. There are only three reasons a man is murdered. He didn't mind his own business. He couldn't keep his mouth shut. Well, he wouldn't keep his hands to himself. Have you ever heard of a place called Widow's Drop? I think my mom met the Dean there. Widow's Drop! No, but it sounds suspicious. Well, anything sounds suspicious if you say it like that. <laughs> Be careful, Jenny. They'll do anything to keep their secrets. Once you start to see things, there's no going back. Do you ever wonder why the lake glows at night? Or why the power keeps going out all over town? Yes, I do. All the time. There's a lot more to this town if you look below the surface. Do you mean that literally or figuratively? Yes. The truth is hiding right under our feet if we only stop to look. <sighs> I'm more confused than when we started. Well, I really have to get to my house. This case won't solve itself. I can drop you off at the bridge. No need. I'm staying here. Some of these rocks have moved. Never trust a crab with a man's job. All right, CJ, you go good there. Am I giving you Be a careful, Jenny. They are everywhere. Always watching. Don't worry about me, CJ. They'll never see me coming. I sneak in silence. I creep in the shadows. My footsteps are whispers. <laughs> Damn it. I've got this. Don't worry. That'll buff out. <laughs> <sighs> Mel, this game is adorable. I love it. Morning Bell News. Oh, God, maybe it is glowing moss. Jenny headed east towards the Almostan Bridge. I can dock there and make my way through the Forgotten Forest without anyone seeing me. Sneaky. Let's see, Rin, is there somewhere that I'm supposed to go here that I haven't already? Because I'm not looking for, like, 100%ing the game. So, I think I just need to head straight out of here at this point. Like, I know there's, there might be some small areas that I missed, but I think I can just head for the exit at this point. Haven't gone south. South from where? South from where I am right now? I suppose I haven't gone south down here. Let's, let's head uh, down there, then. Yeah, right here me as well. And... There is something. Ooh. Well hidden down there. 
All right, almost missed that one. That's really well hidden. Oh, sticker. And I got an achievement, Sticker Club Enthusiast. All right, we can do that. Thank you for that, Rin. I appreciate that. All right, let's get the hell off this lake. I feel like I have been gotten older in the time we have been on this lake. I am ready to get to those creepy woods. So, we've been where I think we need to go right now. But there was some timber blocking the way last time, so I think... If we head there now, we should be able to get to it. We need to head around the, the bear claw right here. That should get us where we're going. Love the art style! I know, it's so cute! I love the art style, I love the voice acting, I love the uh, the music, it's really cute too. Mel, you had a dinghy like this just back in the day. You know how to drive a boat, that's badass! I have spent a little time on a boat. My grandpa had an old rowboat at his cabin back in the day, but I do not actually know how to use a boat. My beard has grown a full inch since we've started, I would believe it. This is the Excalibur, the beard of myth and legend. Sometimes its power is beyond even I to control. Just gotta, just gotta let it be, is all I can do. Alright, we got another sign right here. Hopefully this will let us know where we're at. Oh yeah, this should just be the exit. The exit to this part of the map anyway. Do we have more boating to do? That's the way to my house. Let's leave! night was still and quiet on the far side of the lake. No one ever comes down here, not since they stopped repairing the bridge. And yet it was hard to shake the feeling of being watched. This is CJ's fault. He really believes all that stuff. Once you start to see things, there's no going back. I wonder what he meant by that. That is pretty creepy. All right. So, chat, I think this is probably where we're going to want to stop. We actually streamed way longer than I intended today. But uh, we made a ton of progress. I don't know about you folks, but I'm loving this game so far. This is fantastic. And we will be playing this more tomorrow, if you want to see where all of this is headed to. That time again, yes it is, it is. Yeah, the game really had me hooked here, holy crap. So I'm looking forward to playing some more tomorrow. I hope you will join us for that as well. As always, thank you all for joining us today. I had a fantastic time hanging out with you all, and I'm looking forward to seeing where this is leading us. Thank you as well to all the new folks in here today. Good to see all you, all of you. Good to meet all of you. But uh, we do have one last thing to do before we call it quits for the day, and that is... So I have to quit out of here as well. And that is, as you may know... We gotta see who all else is online, so uh, if you're uh, not done watching Twitch for the day, maybe we can send you over somewhere cool to go hang out. Uh, so, first of all, make sure to hit follow if you haven't already. That'll be the quickest way to uh, find the stream if you do want to watch more tomorrow or at any point in the future. We'd love to have you there. Uh, and while I'm looking to see who all is online right now, there are some links in chat you might want to check out if you haven't seen them already. We have a link to my Twitter if you want to see what I'm up to outside of the stream. We have a link to my YouTube if you want to check out any of the games we've played in the past. Uh, or get caught up on this game as we go along. And we've got a link to my Discord if you would like to chat with myself or the rest of the community outside of the stream. Everybody's welcome there. Feel free to join us there. And I do see someone that I have not gotten a chance to raid in about a million years. So I would love to go stop over there and give them a big warm welcome. So ladies and gents, I hope you will join us as we go raid none other than Hope Noah. 
that somebody you might know, formerly known as Teeps, went through a whole big rebranding, which is very cool. Uh, so yeah, why don't you join me over there? Let's go check them out. If I actually have a raid button, where's my raid button? I don't actually have a raid button. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. There's usually a button to finish the raid. Uh... Oh god, they didn't actually give me a button. Can host but not raid. Alright, we can do that then. We can do that. Is, do I still have a host button over there? Alright, I guess we're just throwing him a host. Alright, well. Yeah, sometimes people turn raiding off. That is fair. That is fair. So, thank you all for stopping by today. I appreciate you all being here. Um, as always, why don't you come over with me over to Teep's channel, hang out for a little bit, say hi, throw them a follow if you like what they're doing. But of course, if you've got other things to do, I will just say as I always do. Have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at in the world. And I will see you folks tomorrow for more Jenny of the Clue. Take care of yourselves till then, everybody.